This is Infection, the Survival Podcast, recorded live on Monday, Ju- Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019. My show notes are wrong. Episode 236. Well, don't I look like an idiot. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for another episode of Infection, the Survival Podcast. It's Tuesday, it's not Monday. Now Brian's updating the notes live. I can see him typing feverishly. So Mr. Show Notes himself, look at this. Show Notes are wrong. We're here, we're live, we're on time. My name is Nick Craig. You can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. We try to do a half-assed job of bringing you the latest news, reviews, updates, and more each and every week. What do you have to say for yourself? Hey, <laughs> you you claim that you don't even read that. That's what you claim. I don't even look at that. No, that's not true. Well, I don't. That's no, what you said before. No, no, I said people say I don't read the notes. I just like. No, no, no. I'm saying like in past show- shows, you said I don't even. What look I at that don't line. read is the infection is your source part. Yeah. So well, I don't that, know what it day is. Say Monday because because was the last it was, episode on a Monday. It was a Monday. We just okay. So and I I'll tell you this: it. another part that's screwed up in here too. While we're while we're while I'm voicing official complaints, it says this is infection. The survival podcast. It used to be recorded live. Now it's live broadcast. Oh yeah. Be- on. What does that mean? Oh, <laughs> it's even a sentence. <laughs> you can change it whatever. I think because we had taken out live for one that was. I took it out so you wouldn't say live. Uh, but I always say pre-recorded. Live. That's the whole point. Is to make them. In fact, so why would I normally say infection? The survival podcast. The survival oh, yeah. podcast recorded live. That's what I say. Recorded live. There we go. Recorded live in caps. Okay. Hey, Brian. All right. My name is Nick Craig. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> doing wonderfully. Excellent. Hey, if you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter or my blog, biteoftech.com. And of course, the website, infectionpodcast.com, has all the show notes. We were looking at episode one here before the show started. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we have all of those on there. Also, we have links to our audio only files. So if you listen to us in the podcast form, maybe you want to listen to us on a different device or different app. We have a lot of links for those. We have our discord server where people hang out, give, uh, give news topics for us in there. There's a lot of stuff you can do there. Uh, we have a steam group gives notification before the show starts. So you happen to be sitting at your computer, whether it's Monday or Tuesday. And whenever we're doing that show, uh, you'll get a notification and that way you can jump in and join us on Twitch. Uh, we have our YouTube channel, and then the supporters tab on the left. If you want to support us on Humble Bundle or on Amazon, so yes, that you can help us, and it won't really cost you anything. It, it won't if you're cost buying you something anything. already. Yeah, no, nope. Brian. Well, you have to buy something. But. Yeah, well, I mean, it'll cost you something, but hopefully, you're buying anyway. Brian, I made yeah. a purchase this week. I became Uh-oh. a cool kid this week. All right, I picked up a pair of Air Apple AirPods. So now, oh my goodness, now I'm you know I'm hanging out, you know I'm chilling, just you know. All day, every day. You, you and Lance, you and Lance at PAX can be wearing your air, but I consulted him very heavily before I made this purchase. He he was a very strong proponent for these devices. I'll tell you what, these are cool freaking devices. I don't yeah, have them in all. I, they, there's some people that have them in 24 seven. I don't. But when I'm when I'm just like at work, and normally I'll keep a little earbud in or uh, one headphone mm-hmm. on, but then I sit back down quickly and I forget. With these things, it's very nice. The price tag wasn't See, nice, but they're nice devices. I don't know. I I look at those things like I was. I remember last time I was in the airport, I just saw all these guys, and I just had a negative view of them every time I saw them walking in the airport. I'm gonna buy you a pair, like, and bring what? them to you in Seattle. Oh, like <laughs> I, I just remember like looking and being like, "Oh, that guy's a douche." Oh, that guy's a douche. <laughs> you did. I did the douchiest thing that I I took a phone call on them. Today. <laughs> I took the, it was the yeah. it was douchery to the maximum. I was actually talking to Lance, funny enough, on the phone today, and that's how I talked to him yep. with my AirPods. Like yeah. walking around like a real, I was doing use the gesture controls to, to end the call. I'll try, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to get over it by packs. Well, you don't really have a choice. I'm wearing them. Yeah. They're just, they're, they're nice. I just, so that was my, that was my uh, survival game purchase of the week. So uh, yeah. I Apple mean, you can't AirPods. beat a good pair of, of wireless headphones. They like, are. Yeah. When I'm, uh, when I'm at the gym, I can't imagine doing all those things and trying to have a cord going down to my phone. No. Like it's just, it's a night and day difference. You'd, I have ones that wrap around my neck and then, you know, I can put them in my ears. That's what I that have. Way if, that's what I have at work. That's what I use for working out. But when I'm at work, I only always want one in. So, but I've got this thing around my neck. There's always one dangling yeah. down. These are very convenient for that. And I'll tell you what, say what you want about Apple. I hate their computers. I think their OS X operating system is awful, but the unification of their devices, I'm like a walking billboard. 
I got the watch. Yeah. I got the phone. I got the AirPods. I'm like a walking billboard for Apple. But dude, I took these things out of the box. There's no pairing. You literally open the case up and the phone auto pairs them. It was pretty impressive. I was impressed. Hmm. So what, what if you have a couple iPhones around? I mean, I don't know how that would work. It's like any other Bluetooth device. You connect it to whatever you want. Bluetooth's yeah, weird I about that though. And Bluetooth, even Bluetooth three is weird about multi-device connections. They, they don't, yeah. it doesn't work very well. So. That's what I was wondering. Like, how does it decide which one? I mean, if you have the, you, so you have the Bluetooth app open on your phone. Yeah, or, you, I mean, I always have Bluetooth open because the watch uses Bluetooth too to communicate. But I'm saying, like, how did you pair it? Like, I didn't do any. Paired automatically. I literally opened, I, I opened the thing and a thing popped up on the phone that said Apple AirPods Trust. I clicked Trust and it there they were synced. Oh, okay. But what? It, okay, my concern would be if it trusted with the wrong phone. Well, the first time it's not in pair mode anymore, so it's fine. Yeah. It was the first time setup, which was a pair. So. Hmm. Well, cool. Yeah. So now I'll look like a real douche at the airport and I don't really care. Yep. I'm going to try, I'm going to take a phone call in the TSA line on my AirPods. <laughs> yeah. I just noticed the guys that are wearing those are like walking in the middle of everybody talking really loud. And it's just how I cut. That's not me though. I'll tell you what, with, with my line of work though, I'm constantly, um, not constantly, but a lot of times I'm on the phone with somebody troubleshooting something and yeah. I had a little earpiece. Those are a pain in the ass. These are great. I actually had to use them today. I was trying to troubleshoot a piece of equipment. I had both of my hands back behind our server rack, and I was on the phone with the company I was trying to troubleshoot with. If I had a damn phone yeah. like wedged up against me, it would yeah. have been a real pain. So, yep. Tap one. All right. Yes. So I, I I want to put you on the spot for something. Oh, here Jesus really Christ! <laughs> so this is not anywhere in the show notes. Not pre-discussed. So I'm. Thinking I gotta go. Sorry, uh, power's going out. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it, should we have a challenge, a PAX push <clears throat> challenge for work, like kind of like our uh, workout? I would be all in under normal circumstances. And here we go. Call me mm -hmm. a pussy, whatever you want. Dude, I'm up at 545 for work every morning. It's just not, I don't, I don't, it's, I just don't think I can do it. It's, okay. Call me weak, call me whatever. I just don't think, I, I don't think I can do it. It's just, all right. It, what I, if, I'm what so if, sleep deprived anyway. It's not going to happen. I mean, I'm exhausted. What if, right. What now. if it's just a, not not like a crazy? What if it's like uh, just a two what, times what a week, if, three times? A week. I'm a gambler. I like loot box. I like gambling. What are the, what are the stakes here? Um, I don't know. Well, I'm trying to think of how we would measure anything. Like, yeah, there's no point. If if you can bench press me, I win. Or you win. If I can bench press you, I win. How about that? <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't know what you're at. I don't. I don't know how we. So can that's make. the goal is to gain as much weight before PAX as possible. I mean, I could do that. <laughs> Eat nothing. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'll whatever. Yeah, we could try something. I just. I, I don't know. I just say like because because we do have our workout channel. For we do. Everyone. I'm working a lot of weird hours these days. Again, excuse excuses. I'm weak. What I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't care. I don't really. I don't care. Uh, you know what? I did have to lift today about a 400 pound transformer. I had to lug it off of a cart, uh, back of a trailer into a thing. I'll tell you what, I worked my ass off today. I was in the hot yeah. heat, I was lugging. There you go, that's the workout. Lugged a big old transformer. I put a link in the uh, chat. Big old transformer lugging it through the woods. Well, there you go. See, that would have been a work the word the day's workout. Yeah, well, I mean, but what am I do? Post a snap a picture. Oh, look at me. Yeah, my isolation. Like, Dude, I'm lifting this thing. You know, people push tires. I push transformers. <clears throat> I picked it up. Here's my, here's my. Uh, Gates BC one high voltage transformer. I was lifting into place. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be a competition, but it's just like encourage it, like to encourage people to like hit the gym once once in a while, maybe on a Saturday, and push your progress because we were doing that, but it's now like Green Man and I doing that. You can't shame me of, of anything. <laughs> Shaming okay. is illegal. <laughs> I've learned. But Sean said he would do it. Go for it. You guys can do whatever you want. No lands to do it. My here's my problem. We are totally off the thing, but it doesn't matter because you're not listening for the news. You're listening for us. Um, <laughs> with the, uh -huh. dude, I've got my schedule is so whacked right now. Like if I don't go to the gym at the same time every day, I won't, and I can't guarantee I can go in the morning, and it's a problem. So that's my excuse yeah. again. Call me weak. I, I I've heard all. So of it. I just. I committed to a friend who he has to go to work really early. So we're going to be going to the gym at like 530 in the morning, um, oh. you know, like two or three times a week. I don't really have an excuse then. <laughs> yeah. So because okay, he, fine, he fine, same fine. thing, he works early. So I was, yeah. So I'm, okay. I'm meeting up with him I'm to do leg three times a week. And then I'm meeting with another person in the evenings to do upper body a couple times a week. Okay, fine. I'm in. 
So two different workout partners. Congratulations. I don't have anybody to work out with. Me me my I know. Me, I, and, I, me and my air to shame my friends. <laughs> I just shame my, my friends <laughs> and say, hey, you know, I, and so my run friend went and got a gym membership at the, my gym so that we could work out. Look at that. I just posted a link in the chat for all of our live audience. That's the transformer I was lifting. Very heavy. It may not look heavy. It's just a bunch of winded copper. Incredibly heavy. If you know what a transformer yeah. is, he, massive transformer. And yes, it was. A I don't know if that's 400 pounds. Oh, okay. Maybe that was a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> Never thought. I was sort of thinking how you picked up 400 pounds. No, yeah, well, it was, it was, it was up, it was upwards of 150. Yeah. It's still a lot. Okay. So that's Very the difference Let's, for people that don't lift heavy things. It makes a big difference. The shape of the thing you're trying to pick up, like my pigs, you could think you could go pick them up pretty easily. No, the shape. And the way they are makes it very difficult, but they're not, you know, I mean, 150 pounds you could pick up, but not, it's, it's about how it's distributed and, and all that. 50 pounds guys. I have, I have 40 pound, uh, uh, workout things. Nowhere near 50 pounds. It took two people to slide that thing across. I, yeah. it was, it was, uh, I was sliding across a wooden floor once I got into the building. It was leaving an indent and scra and like <laughs> indenting the floor the entire way. This was a very large piece of equipment. So fine, I'll do your fitness okay. challenge. Sh I need to be shamed publicly, and this is where we're doing. I know, it. I, I know, I know what motivates you. Yeah, so. shame. I'm a very, I have no, <laughs> I have no self esteem, so shame. And <laughs> very insecure, so, so shame. I just think you know we don't have to go crazy, but I think it would I'm be fun. Okay. okay. To put to put a little push in before packs. Okay, I agree. And. uh and that way, when we get there, it's like, hey, we did something before this. Yeah, then we can show up. We can eat and drink beer and without a, and have no and, shame. And then you won't feel so bad because I'll still feel terrible. I won't feel well, bad drinking mimosas at the airport at nine. You'd be like, I need carbohydrates. And yeah, you yeah. can drink some. Perfect. And yeah, that's that's what that shows what Brian knows about drinking. He's, hey, man, <laughs> it's like a <laughs> South Park character of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're 13 minutes right. into the program. We've we so. almost made it to the show notes. Yes. Um, so. No game of the week going as going forward throughout the summer. Schedules are crazy. Um, I don't remember if I was around on Friday or not. Maybe. Yeah, it was. I think we played league. Shocker. Um, I think yeah. we, I think we did that on Friday. So I'm going to be at a birthday party this Friday. So I know that I won't. Be. Yeah, I don't know what my schedule is. Actually, I've got a friend coming into town, Brian, a friend that you know, somebody that's been in our one of our online groups for quite some time. He's uh, oh, yeah. he's good traveling down down here for a family reunion, so I'll be meeting up with him. That'll be cool. So I won't be around either. Okay. No. Yep. With that said, let's um, <clears throat> I've got some let's let's cover some hot news right off the top, Brian. Here, raw. We talked about it last week. Kickstarter. Oh yes. Um, uh, I got a lot of praise on my thumbnail last week, which was a uh, yeah. <laughs> which was the uh, the raw. Uh, scene cityscape or whatever. So raw background with the uh, with the Kickstarter logo. Got 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 a couple uh, private messages about the top top uh, topical topically. I don't know what word I'd use the, the of of this uh, thumbnail. They really like that. So with that being said, quick recap for people that aren't following Raw. Kickstarter wanted to raise seventy nine thousand dollars. Ended up raising just shy of three hundred thousand and. Yep. Sorry, my ham radio's going off. Uh, um, they b knowingly and publicly said that they were breaking the terms of service from Kickstarter. They said we need more than $79,000, which was yeah. the goal. We won't be able maybe. to actually produce the product with the amount that we're asking for. Which is a it's huge much problem. Generally what they said. Can't do that. Not allowed. Kickstarter makes it very well, clear I think in their TOS. Yeah, Kickstarter says that, but I think there's probably more people doing that with software projects than you realize. Just don't publicize it and you're fine. I mean, just don't get caught. Yeah. Don't get caught speeding. You get caught speeding, you get a ticket. So, well, and this is probably why we get a lot of games that just don't seem like they have nearly the stuff that you expected. So, with that said, uh, Kickstarter pulled them off the service. Um, I, I, I'd have to look. Uh, I should think the notes in here. Um, I think it's still suspended. I, I haven't heard, seen any updates. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, they haven't. Funding is still suspended. So they, they raised 192, excuse me, it was just shy of $200,000. So they raised 192000 out of 78000 shut down, broke the TOS. Before this, we were supposed to have a couple of gameplay videos right before yep. the game. Now, we did last show on a Monday. The Kickstarter ended either late Monday night or early Tuesday morning in the U.S. Yep. 
there was, there was still not a gameplay trailer, and it wasn't supposed to be released until Wednesday. So the game, the first actual trailer of gameplay, which has been talked about for months, well, not for months, but leading up since the beginning of the project, which was 30 days ago on Kickstarter, for that whole month, it was talked about gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. At the earliest, it wasn't going to be released until a day after their funding ended. And by the way, they did receive their goal, so they would have been good. Um, so let's fast forward a little bit to this week. Did we get a gameplay trailer, Brian? And what's some of the controversy around it? Um, so this, it, I would not say this is a gameplay trailer. We did receive a trailer of something. Yep. Uh, and here. me being, I guess you could say I'm in the industry, right? I make YouTube videos to talk about this exact you're thing. YouTuber, you're YouTuber, absolutely in the industry. <clears throat> yes. Uh, and so if you look at what Nick is showing on the screen, uh, you see a character. They call it, This is their character controller demo, which the character controller, which says when you push forward uh, mm -hmm. do this animation and have the character move forward when you put back it does a backward run uh, it kind of just organizes the animations and makes it so the character moves in a realistic manner that you would think they should well this uh what's kind of disturbing about it is this is pretty much two marketplace assets put together um you know these the way that they did the controller is not anything that looks like a very generic, I think they use Unity, if I remember correctly. They do. Uh, controller. I've done a little bit of work. Again, I've, when I say a little bit, Brian, I can't stress how little bit of work I've done. And in the little bit of work I've done, Sean and I were making a little project. We had keyboard and mouse and controller support like from day one. It's built into the, I mean, it's, it's, it's built into the engine. I mean, all you have to do is configure yep. it and then configure your asset to be controlled by it. Is that, is that a correct explanation? It's very simple. Yeah, and, and the fact that these guys are using uh, pretty much stock things uh, in the course of one of my videos, like I could create this in an hour in in one of my videos, right? I mean, something that we've done we've done more than this in an hour in one of my videos, and so that's what's crazy to me is I, I put a link to um, the Unreal version of this asset that they're running around in. What do you uh, explain what you mean by that? So you can go onto the Unreal Marketplace and there's something similar for Unity as well. Uh, CryEngine has one. But people will go through and make a whole scene. Uh, they'll go through and make every aspect of it. Uh, you can see here Nick showing a warehouse that looks very similar. Hold on. So and, uh, and, and you can see that you know, they have all the shelves. They, they make all the, pet, the things that would be in there. And then you can purchase this. I think this one was what, 80 bucks? Yeah. 79 bucks. So yeah. you could... $79.99, you could go purchase this and you would have all of these assets and you could then just load your character into the scene. And then just like you saw in that video that they're showing, you could run, have them run around. Um, uh, oh, it's Judd is asking, is that, you know, ALS? What's that mean? No, this is Unity. So a ALS is the is a locomotion system that uh, somebody built for Unreal Engine. Uh, I don't know the Unity marketplace as well, so I can't really tell you, but this looks very generic. I mean, it looks like nothing interesting is standard... going on here. It's a guy running around yeah. in a pre. This is clearly not assets from the game because none of this makes any sense. It's not a city. It's it, it's. I mean, it's a it's a it's an office warehouse is what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, they didn't that, put well, any that's... garbage in here. This is all. This is all. No, this is it, all bought. It looks like it was all yeah, just a purchased asset that way too much detail on stupid things like the computer and the printer for this to be a designed by them asset. So their game, so you're telling me their gameplay trailer is a pre-bought player model and a pre-bought scene, and they've hooked up a controller and the or, or a keyboard and mouse, and they are pressing space and W A S and D and moving the mouse. Yes. Now, can I show you? I'm going to put a link. I don't. What, is it hard for you to just no, to start playing a video? Absolutely not. I'm next, um, Brian, so, I do a lot for the show. Absolutely, it's not a. But so at that timestamp, there's no link. So this is a video that um, that I put together that uh one of our viewers ben who works with me he created this whole scene in like a week you have to post the link it's not in there i i, uh, I it is it's are not. you sure you're on the right page i don't show you in the show notes i don't show you in the show notes either there's something broken <laughs> let me refresh it um yeah i'm refreshing as well you're on the right oh, yeah you're in the right, you're in the right, I see, right week? I see question marks yeah now. did that, you put those there? i did because there was no link 
Yeah, it, for some reason it didn't link us. Now I see you up there. Okay. That's weird. So can you post it? There it is. Okay. Yep. Um, um, so from that, that shows I, it as that. We should just wrap it up, but there's just no point in doing, <laughs> no point in doing this yeah. show. Yeah, where do I click? <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. You sent me a timestamp video. The video's over. <laughs> Come on. Um, let me try it again. <laughs> so go to 53 minutes, 41 seconds. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So you can see here. So this is this is something that wow. I put together this is not in, raw, by the way. during the video. Yeah, <clears throat> this not is raw. not raw. This is something that you have done or one of your friends has done. Yes. Well, so the scene was one that, uh, that Ben made. Okay. And then um, during the video, I showed someone how to pretty much make the character move like this and climb and do all that. And so that was done in, you know, in like an hour. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a 54 minute video. So, so that shows you, I'm just comparing the amount of work that they did to produce that video. That was such a big deal to them. Um, that, I mean, that's just crazy. Okay. That, that, that's their big push. Hot take. What's yes. even crazier is that this video has 460 likes and 117 dislikes. It's got a very positive up like ratio. How is that possible? I don't know. People are people put money into it. People don't understand what they're seeing, right? But, but I mean, most people wouldn't look at that and realize, oh, they didn't make any of that, right? Like there's, it looks like they just kind of pieced together three assets. I assume the character is something they bought as well, but it's it's that scene for the warehouse. It is a character that they purchased and then probably a movement controller. This is all that I see there. This guy's comment takes the cake. It says, please rename Raw to Raw, the default Unity character controller demonstration. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that character controller could be the default one. It, oh, I'm sure it, it is. Unreal why would you? Something very similar. Why would you? Why you? I, if they, you tell me they've spent all their time over the past however long building a character controller. And, and that's, that's. But that was the whole point. If that's their character controller demo. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's the name of the video. It's the character <laughs> controller demo. Like. They, it's the default character controller from what I can tell. If that's something they custom built, that's not good. I mean, that's some of the roughest animations. And it's like, I, I, I'm personally not a fan of lean. Um, so this, so you get, when you buy an animation pack, so they bought an animation pack and they Which put it in fun. there. And, Very common. Yeah, but, the, but a lot of times you see in these animation packs that you buy in their default controllers, they have a lean instead of, you can see in my character, there's no lean. Generally, you want to lean if you're not doing like behind the characters type of movement. Because you can see, if you look at the very beginning of the video, you can, and when he turns, you can see how he just kind of like leans to the side. It's like he's riding a bicycle. Yeah. I mean, and that's made for sprinting when you're sprinting really fast and you yeah. kind of lean going around a corner. But you look how slow he's going. You're not supposed to lean like that. Yeah. It literally looks like he's a bike. It looks like he is a bicycle. The way that he's leaning, like like, like yeah. his whole body, like, like he's like out of balance. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's very poorly done. I mean, if, if I, if I picked up uh, Unity and then was like, okay, on a Saturday, I'm going to make something, you know, and it'll figure out Unity a little bit, it would probably look like this. But the thing is, supposedly they've been working on this and he's been programming it for how long? Is it two years or something that I've heard? Yeah. And, uh, um, and, you know, they're, they have all this stuff they've been doing and, you know, he didn't have time to make a video. And it's just, it's brutal. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, not horrible, but it's, it's it is not... horrible. Are you kidding me? Well, I mean, this I, is I, your thirty-day no, gameplay it demonstration. Really depends, it really depends on how much of this is pre-done versus something he built. If if he did this a hundred percent from scratch, then I would say it's a good start. Then he's stupid. Right? <laughs> but the thing is, I don't think that he. I don't think that he did it from scratch. There's too many marketplace assets that I see in that scene, and yeah. it's it just I don't think he did it. <laughs> Which is crazy that they posted this video saying this is them testing our controller character controller mechanics i mean i think i said this last week these guys are scumbags they've misled they've clearly lied to people and they're stupid i mean they are stupid they're stupid they they're and i'm not saying they're stupid because they did something because of no reason they're stupid because they willingly and knowingly broke the kickstarter terms of service and then complained about it and said oh well, it was yeah. me and they didn't give us a warning that that is the definition of stupid yeah and now this is their day late after kickstarter is over 
gameplay demo is a, a what all appears to be pre-bought assets running around a warehouse. Yeah. I mean, if they really wanted to convince people that this wasn't, I mean, if they did this from scratch, then okay, that's not bad, right? If they did all the, that whole warehouse scene from scratch, I would say, okay, that's good. Yeah, but that would not so, be good. This game is not a warehouse. This well, game... but I'm saying, I'm saying if this was just an example, now the fact that there's no doors that you can go outside, you're trapped in this room is not a good sign, uh, you know, because they're not showing you anything outside of the warehouse. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the warehouse looks nice, but there's too many other identical warehouses on marketplaces that it just doesn't look like, it looks like they purchased. Well, the people don't seem to be upset about it. Because they're up, I mean, there's people that are leaving nasty comments, but people aren't like, yeah. I mean, they're leaving comments, but they're, it's got videos got almost 500 likes. I don't know. I mean, I, but as I said, a lot of people don't have no clue that this is pretty much default. Like this is them just making a default project, importing this asset importing another asset plugging in the character into that asset insanity so yeah and i hear i hear i mean i've not worked with unity but i hear it's easier than unreal um so it can't i mean it's not like this should be a lot more work i, I always hear that it's easier so it should be easier than what the stuff that that i demo so i i don't know why how in the world they hear putting this out unless they're just really that incompetent at like he's really that unskilled at this well apparently that it's is a possibility. Two, apparently it's two guys the entire game is two guys and they're going to make a, the biggest open world gta style so, mmo oh, for the for the level design and everything yeah the whole game is two people brian oh wow okay well that's not good of course it's not good so i don't know <laughs> So that's the update. I mean, I, there's not really anything else to talk about. That's the update. So the gameplay trailer is a big nothing. The link is in the show notes. Of course, it's an unlisted video. Um, yeah. They can keep it in their private Discord channels and whatnot. But it'll be on our show notes. Our website, as always, is infectionpodcast.com. Let, let's hope that the, these guys don't raise any more money. Because they, 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 they appear, appear to be scammers for all intents and purposes. Or they're just clueless. Well, okay. I mean, they did a really good job of making those videos. Yeah, videos are great. Like the cutscenes, I mean, I they put so much work into that, but they must just know nothing about programming. Again, I think the Unity thing is the much easier. And yeah. I, and again, even I mean, if you don't know about pro none everybody. of that in there would have re would require custom programming. There are hundreds of YouTube tutorials on how to do what that video entails. Yeah. So with no knowledge, you can go watch some guy. I'm saying, like you for mm -hmm. unity that will lay out the steps tell you what to do and help you with the process so i mean yeah and you needed seven eighty thousand dollars to do that yeah or in this case almost two hundred thousand if they didn't screw themselves and reach their goal oh i mean i think it's good though that that people are saw this i, I think it's good that kickstarter caught it yeah i agree because this would have been a big mess i mean if that's all they can produce there's no way they're making a game. They're not. Yeah, I would. Or if they do, I'll have uh, you. Would, uh, you'll have great grandkids, and it'll I'll make have, a run. Yeah. And I'll have grandkids. It'll, it'll make a run. <laughs> it'll make a run for its money on against uh, No Man's Sky. Yeah, I mean the game. Will I mean, uh, next hated game. I'll be retired. I'll be collecting Social Security by the time that game comes out. I mean, give me yeah. a break. So uh, what? Yeah, no. Uh, what's that other game where? Uh, uh, space Roberts, whatever. What's Come it on, you can do it. Robert Space, something. It is Robert Space. I try to remember. Space. Uh, <laughs> no, you put me on the spot before. Now you're going to sit here and start. I Nobody in chat telling what it is. Uh, Space Force. It's not <laughs> Space Force. <laughs> Star Citizen. Thank you, Saul. Yeah, Roberts. Whatever. Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good, good game. Robert Star Simulator. There you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but anyways, uh, yeah, Star Citizen. No, there's I, actually I playable get emails. stuff. I get, yeah, I get emails. That love, we've done this. Yeah, we've there done is. This. There's playable stuff. This is a whole another part. But the point is... But the thing is, is they, they're actually making a game with incredible technology. Well, they they're, are. That controller was not incredible technology. But it's some of the same issue where... 
Um, games, like, I'll give you a great example, Brian. Let's talk about Timely Matters. Air, the Area 51 thing, right? It's all over mm-hmm. the news. The thing isn't until late September. All the hype is built up right now. And in a week, nobody will care. Nobody will be talking about it. And that's going to yeah. be the end of it. And it's the same thing yep. with video games. And, and I, I feel the exact same way with Star Citizen. Uh, I feel a similar way with Star Citizen, where it's game was super hyped up in 2013. Yeah. Now what? The people that are all in play and may talk about it, but nobody else knows what's going on. Because well, nobody and cares. The problem is when it takes you that long to produce a game, uh, part and you're of public the issue, about it. Yeah, and you're public about it. The, the issue is back when they first announced it, that stuff was cutting edge. Yeah. Like all that stuff was amazing. And it's still, there's cutting edge pieces to it. But you fast forward six years and take a look. I mean, we're going to be having um, some incredible games coming out in the next year. Uh, we're going to be having games that are pushing the limits as far as the size of maps, uh, the amount of just high definition, you know, 4K things that are happening. Uh, we we watch when they released Red Red Dead Redemption. I mean, you looked at that and it's like I just looked at the scenes. I'm like, some of these are just so beautiful. I enjoyed riding around because of how beautiful the game was. Uh, I think that they now, if they release a game, it's not like not going to be nearly or Star Citizen as they release and becomes more public. It's not going to be nearly as as you know just awe inspiring as what I think they were hoping for and what they're trying to do, because it's taking them so long to get it out. I would agree totally. So, I mean, that, that, that is part of the issue. And, um, what's the, uh, this, what's the, what's the next game that's coming out? That's the futuristic, uh, cyborg ish, you know, cyberpunk? everybody's modded cyberpunk 2077. I yep. think it is because they have different years. So the reason I question is because there's in the game, the actual board game, there's different, years versions so um but yeah that i mean look at that like that's supposedly supposed to be really cutting edge it is well that studio has has not really talked about it that much for how big of a game it is there's not that much information out there and so rather than them putting everything on the table and say here's every little detail that we're doing uh you know they they go through and and they'll give you like kind of cut scene things but you know with that that could be an incredible game and when it's released you'll find that out but there's none of that hype that dies down over time. Like they're doing it within a year to a year and a half of when the game's actually going to come out and it's going to be done. Hmm. But that's, I mean, look at that game. I mean, that game, it could blow our socks off. I think it'll be, I think it's going to be a run for its money against like uh, how Red Dead Redemption was. I agree. I think there's a lot of hype on it and it's a legitimate company and I don't think they're going to do some of the BS that a lot of these other games have. and again it's 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 simply a how do i put this it's it's simply the amount of resources and i think that's what people don't seem to understand with a lot of this stuff brian this really at the end of the day comes down to resources and you can say whatever you yeah. want about bethesda and ea you know it's all about resources you yeah. have to have money you have to have people that are competent and in the case of a lot of these kickstarters and a lot of these games they have neither they don't in some yeah. cases, they don't. They in most case, uh, almost hundred percent of the time, they don't have the money, and then it's yeah. probably a 50-50 shoot on. Do they have the actual people that can make it happen? The talent to do it. Well, yeah, and you need, and and Brian, you're very talented at what you do, but you can't build a game like you're trying to build by yourself. So you need other competent yeah. people, and that's been a real struggle for you is finding other people yeah. that either have the same skill set as you, or actually, you don't want them to have the exact same. Find people that have other yeah. similarly leveled skill sets but in other things that you aren't so good at that's yeah. a, so and, it's a tough and like i've and like you saw with that scene that you showed earlier like if you told me to go in and build that scene and you know make all that stuff look like that like i wouldn't be able to like you know, i would have to go and learn all that from scratch the problem is is when you have two guys supposedly making this game uh well you know i can almost promise you they don't have all of the skills required to make that game between the two of them yeah um, I do, and I, I don't want to poke fun at this, but I think it's an important part to the story. PH just posted in here <clears throat> last Saturday, uh, well, Saturday, a couple days ago. Um, the developers posted in their Discord that um, I don't like to share personal information, but on the other hand, our behavior may seem strange, and I think I should explain what's going on. All the delays with real gameplay are due to the rapid de- uh, deterioration of my father's health. Now the situation is close to critical. We'll show what we promise, but later. Hope you have an understanding. 
I haven't dealt with a family member dying. I've been very fortunate in that regard. But the gameplay video was already should have already been done. This was a now. Yeah. The, the excuse came up, now this is a problem. The gameplay yeah. video should have already been done. So I understand something may have come up last minute, but the gameplay video should have already been done. And yeah. here's the problem. You, you have asked me, and I'm... Them, they, you have asked me, the consumer, to give you money to build a game, and I hate to say this, I hate to sound rude, that's not my problem. Yeah. You said you were going to do this. I gave you my money. I held up my end of the bargain. You said you were going to do this. I'm not trying to sound insensitive. I, I'm, I haven't dealt with it. All my point is, it's a bullshit excuse at the eleventh hour. Is what it is. Yeah. So is his father's health probably deteriorating? Yes. But the gameplay video was supposed to be done weeks ago. So a yeah. health issue now is delaying something that should have been dealt with three weeks ago. Yeah. So, you know, look at this. We've never taken a week off. We've had a whole bunch of crazy issues, <laughs> as, as, as Judd points out. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's yeah. ridiculous, and, dude. It's, and this is and why games have bad raps. Because there's people like this that are screwing the consumer. And then yeah. everything is a woe is me, woe is me. You didn't live up to your end of the bargain. You're being shady. You're being a shyster. And you get what you deserve, which is $200,000 ripped out of your hands. That's what you deserve. Because you're, you're shady. Well, and the, the issue is, is this character controller... If if they've been working on the game this long, this isn't all they. I think this shouldn't be what he's showing. Even if he's had something that's in the recent times causing him a big distraction, there should be much more than this already created. That, that's my point. Is so you have waited until I'm an expert in this. I work in this. I work. I work in this field a lot. You wait to the last second, and then there's an excuse when the problem should have been solved. Wake up the chain. In the case of the gameplay trailer, should have been done. So an issue at the last, I'm Mr. Procrastinator, I understand, but a last minute issue should not have thrown the entire train off the train tracks, which is essentially yeah. what has happened. The whole thing now has come to a grinding halt because of a family's health issue. Terrible situation, yeah. awful situation, don't wish it upon anybody, but it's not an excuse to why the work that should have been done weeks ago is not, because that's a now yeah. issue. It, yeah. I mean, that's all it and, is. And, and. The, this is the thing is the fact that he showed it for just from what he showed it puts across to me the idea that he has done no work yeah absolutely uh, no no work on this part of it um and you know as we said the scenes like the videos you know the, obviously they've gone through maybe you know i mean they, they teach you when you go to uh to school you know how to make the scenes and do the animations and create those i mean that's a lot of what what that is about you know they've done that part uh but they're just showing that they're doing a, a one particular area of game design, which is the cutscenes. Well, there's a lot more to make that giant open world game that they're claiming they're going to make. And they're, from this, I'm just seeing that that skill is not represented on their team. And so perhaps they should say, you know, we need to raise Kickstarter funds to hire people that have this skill to do this. Because obviously... It, he's not going to get anywhere if that's his skill in programming. Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything to yeah. say. This is par for the... We, I mean, we are the... Uh, I, I really do feel like we don't talk about anything on this show. We talk about the same... We have talked about this literally a hundred times. Of games yeah. pop up, disappear, lame excuses... The most recent or the biggest example that is in probably a lot of memory of a lot of people is Atlas. Same kind of BS. The woe is me. Last minute. It's a holiday. People out of town. Crap. I don't care. I'm the consumer. I already bought your damn game. I lived up yeah. to my end of the bargain. It's like paying your power bill and the company power company is like, ah, you repair man's out. So your power is going to be out for three more days. He's out of town. Yeah. His father is sick. It's not acceptable. You're paying yeah. them for a service. And it's, a, and it's the same thing with that. Yeah. Again, I understand yeah. situations happen. I understand it's indie. I understand there's no money in it. But nobody wants to hear 
lame excuses. Things happen. Yeah. I get it. It's the industry I work in. Shit happens. But, like, ex excuses three days after the game comes out is ridiculous. I just, I can't handle it. It's just no. not acceptable to me. Well, and they they paid the price. I don't know Good. that we'll they see if, if they can, they continue to try to push this. I mean, we'll see what they actually make and if there's people that continue to follow them. You're an idiot if you continue to, if you invest in this game. Sorry. Yeah. Hot take. <laughs> no. It's it just, this, com this, this studio has got less than zero track record. I mean, it's just... Yeah. They've got it. They actually they do have a track record. They have a track record of poor, awful, terrible decisions. Yeah. So, well, well, we'll see if they pop back up in the news, though. I mean, it seems like these games always kind of pop back up somehow. Um. Uh. Uh. uh, uh, uh Ph does quickly mention that Keemstar. I saw this on Twitter a couple days ago. Um. He's quickly re he's releasing an Area Fifty One game. Uh, yeah. Like that's it's so early access and so not done that it's almost meme worthy and it's got 22 reviews and 31% of them are positive. It came out today. Nice. It's called storm area 51, September 20th, 2019. It, I mean, it looks like a terrible dreamcast game. Um, it's just, it's just an awful Sega dreamcast game and it's $9. Nice. So you I'm go, you go ahead and check that out. Um, I'll tell you what though. Talk about good capitalizing on a hot event. This is what you need to do. Yeah. This is exactly what well, you need. And guess what? You make a couple. I don't wonder. Go ahead. Well, one thing with that, like if he encourages people to go and troll and make trolly um, reviews, he'll get so many sales from people that just want to go in there and make a trolly review. Because, you know, Keemstar. Yeah, like, absolutely. He could, but he could have a ton of sales on that and have an almost all negative review just because <clears throat> he's getting people to go on there and leave trolley reviews point with this is you capitalize while it's hot you make a couple bucks real quick uh, this game couldn't have cost much to make make a couple bucks real quick nobody will care yep. by the end of august se around september 20th people start caring again and then it's over and then you're good to yep. go you've made your money and you're done so go check it out now so i i, I wanted to talk really quick about i saw this article you know on your phone well i have google news you know it'll show you all these articles that it thinks that uh it, you'll be interested in i saw an article talking about a red dead redemption uh dlc oh that that was going to be coming out and it's the problem it so the dlc that they did for the original red dead redemption it was what well, it was something dead it was yeah, you're uh talking about the zombie, like zombie game but it was a full it wasn't mm -hmm. dlc it was a full game it's called like dead or alive yeah. or something like that uh the, so they were talking about making having a dlc that included that in the in the game like that mm. they would add that to the game uh undead and, nightmare I, yeah undead nightmare yep yeah. and so i figured okay that'd be interesting yeah it was you all know, right at least I, I didn't think they were going to be doing anything for red dead 2 as far as dlc uh but then earlier actually uh yeah earlier today an article came out saying that that was bogus oh. and also they were talking about doing a remake of red dead redemption the original one and they said that that's not true as well you want to hear the source of this article? A Reddit hmm. user claimed they were friends with an environmental artist that said all the new features from Red Dead Redemption 2 would be imported to a remake. The map would be larger and the new li and new lines of dialogue would be report re recorded. So yep. we did it, Reddit. <laughs> we got an IG, yeah. a PC Gamer article out of it. Congratulations. And so, I mean, it was on major, it well, was sure. on major uh, news sites posting as true and they got it the information off of reddit it's called trolling yes <laughs> from what i remember so i just thought that people if you did see this pop up in your news feed just keep in mind that it has been said to be and and the people that did this on reddit are fully admitting that it was and they talk about how they tricked everybody so i uh i saw this is red dead. <clears throat> i want to show a quick meme while we're way off topic this is the top post on the H1Z1 subreddit right now. It says, Devs, you fell victim to one of the classic blunders. Listening to Reddit for balance changes. I thought that was very yeah. funny. And of course, yes. a whole bunch of, of course, the comment section on that's a cesspool. But uh, yeah. yeah, I thought that's well, we don't good. go in there anymore. <laughs> so there you go. Hot stuff on Reddit these days. Yes. We should just do uh, our so show on Reddit. We, all, only Reddit news was what we will cover. The Reddit yeah, podcast. Yeah, we should. We <laughs> 
<laughs> we just go and troll, or I mean, scroll the uh, Reddit forums. Yeah. NSFW, um, NSFW, I, NSFW, 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 <laughs> just post after post. So I, I did find an article here talking about uh, China's, we talked about this before, China's anti-addiction regulations that they're doing. Yeah, for gaming. Uh, yeah, and one thing that we're, they're finding is they're, a lot of these companies are trying to figure out, should we do this, first of all, because it's putting them in weird moral situations because of the laws in, uh, in China. Uh, I mean, you know, as most people I would assume know, China is a commun communist country and they put restrictions on things like violence, gore, spiritualism, political messages. Like you're not allowed to put any of that stuff in your game. And so, uh, and so a lot of these companies uh, are finding, well, if your game is very centered around po like some political thing, how in the world are you going to make it friendly to be able to publish in China? Uh, we know Tencent is one of the companies that we talk about a lot because they're one of the main publishers inside of, of China. And that's one thing that they do is they, they make it to where it matches you no, know, doesn't have blood, doesn't have, you know, it has like green spray flying out of the, uh, the character. And so these companies, they're having to go through and pretty much redo a lot of their games to be able to publish them in China. Uh, and, you know, and it makes a big difference too. I mean, you, you saw H1Z1 did this. Mm -hmm. They've been over backwards for China. The yeah, game was drastically different. And do you, do you think that it was worth it for them? I know I've given my, given my comment like a year or two ago about this. Um, at the time, absolutely, because it was where the people were playing, and nobody I mean, they, in the US they made was a lot playing. of sales. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. But then laws changed. It, the what people wanted in China changed, and then they, when they left, there was nobody playing it anymore. Now they play PUBG. I mean, yeah, they moved on to PUBG, and and it killed the whole company. I mean, if you look, oh, yeah, essentially, it, uh, you know. So was it worth it? Uh, I, I think other companies are going to have to be looking at that as an example of, do we really want to chase China and are we willing to compromise our game for the sake of China? Yeah. And we are, we are willing to risk our whole company because, you know, people would say, oh, no, that wouldn't happen. Well, it just, it did. <laughs> we watched it unfold yeah, and happen in front of our eyes. So I, I think that this is something that these companies now have to really look at and and make a decision are we willing to compromise because if you compromise too much i mean if you start letting china in and you asked pubg or you asked daybreak about this and made them very uncomfortable oh yeah but you know the second that you let china in on the american servers it's game over you're racist like, americans <laughs> americans just have no interest in playing anymore because it's just not fun so i i think that uh, i think we're going to be seeing more of that because uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in China with this. I mean, they're doing, they have like a, a ranking system for people as far as how good of a citizen you are. Um, there, there's just a lot of crazy stuff up happening over there. And I think that as they get more and more regulated, I think it's very risky for a company to step in there anymore. Like, cause they could just say, oh, we don't like your game anymore. And you, you can't publish here. Uh, and it'll kill your game. Like you will lose your whole user base overnight because they have the ability to do that. Where in America, they couldn't. They couldn't just shut down every connection to that game, um, you know, and guarantee that it's going to be closed. China has a firewall that will. So, yes, um, that's a, it's an interesting story. Um, or the, and the, it's not a story per se, but the whole situation is very interesting. And we've yeah. seen it with PUBG. And I think there, while it will be, it'll be a lot different because the the player counts are so much higher that the bleed yeah. will be a slower longer bleed but it will absolutely happen at some point i mean you'll see the 800,000 yeah. player will be 300,000 and that'll be us yep. players they'll move on to a different game and you know that overnight you could see you could see pubg's numbers just plummet i mean it's very 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 possible for that to happen uh when you're counting on them as your player base yeah so, and it's, it's weird, like, that the, they do go, like, all at once they switch games. I mean, it, it just, it seemed it's like it the happened hot trend. Overnight. It's just the hot trend. Yeah. It's what people are playing. And again, we've said this a million times. You play what your friends play. And if all your friends are playing H1Z1, you play H1Z1. They all start playing PUBG, 
H1Z1 flashed in the past. Nobody cares. Yep. And it's not just a, I'm, we're just using that as the example, but it's, it's been done tens, hundreds of times before. It's the same thing. Yep. So, so with that China. said, I do want to mention a couple names here, Brian, a couple of subscriptions yes. that we've got here um, over the past week. Uh, TechZone707, um, Ga- Gaudimus, uh, thank you. Um, Saul Greatman, Falcons, The Falcons Watch, and Green Man Cartoons, who might who might be coming out to PAX, which would be, uh, oh, yeah. which would be cool. So uh, thanks to all those uh, individuals. And uh, you'll get mobbed by all of his uh, YouTube fans. Oh, dude, I'll be, I'll be, I'm going to be standing out with a sign like, this is the guy that made the art cartoon. I'll, have my, I'll be like a homeless person with my sign. I'm going to follow him around with a sign. <laughs> I, make, yeah. I make cartoons. <laughs> yep. So, so that, that would be fun, though. We, we need yeah. to... Uh, oh. If there's anybody who's going to be in the Seattle area during PAX, uh, they should hit us up and we can uh, go grab a bite to eat or something. Yes, absolutely. Please do. Uh, or if you know of good places to go in Seattle for eat or drinks or whatever, um, let us know. Send us an email. Contact that infectionpodcast.com. If you've got a recommendation, I don't know. There's a couple video game bars I know that exist around town. Let us know. I, we, just let, I don't know. That'd be oh, yeah. Cool. We can go to a trivia night. It'll be amazing. We are do absolutely doing trivia again. I don't care. You can the do the same place. I don't know. Maybe you can do whatever you want, Brian. You're free. you're a grown you're a grown ass man. You can do whatever you want. I'm just saying. I'm I'll answer the I'll answer the first set of section uh, questions. You can answer the second. Those were tough questions. questions, man. That was something like I was like, damn. I, I thought I was a nerd. No, <laughs> this, I don't even yeah, know but, these people they're talking about. But the second one was the, the second half of it was all like Ru, RuPaul's. WWE. It was like no, wrestling. it was like RuPaul's. No, no, no. It was RuPaul's drag. You know the drag queen. The, all the questions were about her uh that show i don't even know what that is for the second half i, I don't remember <laughs> i have no idea it, that's why that's why we left like yeah we got, there was a whole bunch of questions wrestling there. questions too are you thinking of the same place yes okay we're not doing this on the show this is an off topic thing uh <laughs> um yes so yeah it, seattle if you're an expert in seattle let us know um okay the, with that said, um, let's, okay, so go on. We, we, uh, let's talk about Blender really quick because I mentioned this last week. It's more so that, ideas, yes, <laughs> yes, that Epic had uh, that had given them a grant. Well, now Ubisoft is actually joining and they are giving money to the development fund for Blender as well. And they're saying that they're going to start using uh, Blender at Ubisoft. Oh. So, I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, that's probably a 3DS Max house. And uh, and for them to switch over and start using Blender, that's, uh, that's you know, they made they make Far Cry, Watch Dogs, Just Dance, which we always see. Every year at what, E3. Like, the headline <laughs> at E3, yep. Assassin's Creed. Um, all the Tom Clancy video games. Like, they make some of the main ones. Uh you know, for them, they got to be looking at. We put so much into licensing, probably, just for 3ds. You know, and if they put that same amount into Blender, they could probably get a very, very good product back. That then they don't have to keep rebuying. So, uh, but yeah, I thought that was that was very interesting that they're joining in. It'd be interesting to see how many other companies kind of see this as an investment uh, and start throwing money at them because. Uh, the product it'll be interesting to see where the product is in a year i mean with all this money that's being thrown at them i think what's happening is the sas model works great for small companies but when you start getting to the size of uh, ubisoft and activision sas which is software as a service things with monthly subscriptions in a lot of cases become unreasonable I mean, you have hundreds yeah. of copies of 3ds max at 50 60 i don't know 70 dollars a copy you're t- I mean, yeah. you, you're, you, you've got, you, you're literally pissing money. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. insane. And you're doing that with 3ds max. You're probably doing that with uh, Adobe and Photoshop. You're probably doing that with office 365 or, or some uh, Microsoft tech solution for your email, or you're doing it with Google for their drive solution. These companies yeah. are bleeding monthly subscriptions. And if they can invest, yeah, you know, what was it that was it? One, one and a half million that, uh, Something Epic like that, game, that, yeah, Epic did. You invest that, in, invest that. You put that into Blender once, 
and now you aren't bleeding tens of thousands of dollars a month in software services. Yep. And this is something that you really see in the Linux world. Uh, there's a lot of companies that highly rel rely on some sort of a Linux application or yeah. something about Linux. And so what they do is they hire on somebody who works on that full time and contributes to the project. And that's what they're doing with this. Ubisoft is actually uh, having employees that sit there and they contribute to the Blender open source project. So they're making things to improve Blender under Ubisoft's time, contribute it to the project so that they can pretty much tailor make it to how they want it to be. Yeah. So, the, and this, you do see this with Linux. I mean, this is exactly what they do with Linux. You have people at Microsoft, you have people at all these other companies that are sitting there and creating software and, and submitting it to, uh, to the Linux core. I just think if you look at companies trying to cut budgets, you, of course you can fire people. That's one thing. Um, yeah. But cutting some of the, and again, you're not going to do it with that. PH brings up GIMP as a replacement to Photoshop. It's not. GIMP is awful. No. I don't care what anybody says. GIMP is terrible. But it's the closest to Photoshop. It is, but, but it's, it, you, you, would, you would have to have companies dump money into it to even get it close. That's my point. So a case like Photoshop, probably not going to happen. Um, but, but imagine if they got $5 million in funding. Could they make something that then was comparable to Photoshop? Probably not. Because, I don't know, probably not. But the but the point is, yeah. is if you can cut just one or two or three of those services back, it can save you tens of thousands of dollars a month, depending on the size yeah. of your company. Yeah, Corel Draw, as Judd brings up. Oh yeah, it's back. let's go back. Corel Draw, moving the whole industry, dumping it. My relationship with Adobe is over. To Corel we go. <laughs> well, my dad, he still uses WordPerfect. Oh, and uh, and but the thing is, is WordPerfect does things, certain things that. Like attorneys like WordPerfect because you can see the codes. It's like editing, I guess, HTML in a document. And it lets you go in and, and really get the document to look how you want it to. Uh, and Word doesn't give you those kind of controls. So for him, it works. But you know what? Most of the world doesn't use. So I'm sure there's people that use some of these applications because they do that specific thing that they want. You know, that other people would like and say, well, why wouldn't you use 3DS? Or why wouldn't you use? Yeah. You know, a good I mean, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that use Blender. Um, one of the people in chat, he makes assets for me and uh, had Neophyte. And he, he uses Blender. He does a very good job. You if, know, he, he, Blender is very powerful for people who know how to use it. If open source is maintained, it can be very powerful. If it's not maintained, it turns into a real dumpster fire real quick because things don't yeah. work. And then there's a whole bunch of hot, uh, a whole bunch of mismatching going on and duct taping together and then it then that's why open source has a bad rap in a lot of cases not every case yeah. but in the case of I, I think this it's it's maintained and it's it's good to go i think yeah i think that blender has gotten enough love over the years yeah to where it, it has been able to stay a contender in the market and so i think that that that's put them in this position to where they just they realize with a little bit more funding like it could be a good comparison yeah all right um Lots of uh, lots of good stuff going on there, Brian. Uh, game yes. giveaway is that something that we can uh, we can do? Mm -hmm. So uh, let me go ahead and let's do exclamation point giveaway in chat. Don't type it quite yet because I'm hitting enter. Uh, this will be a sixty point raffle. So if uh, if you've been watching for the last hour, uh, you will be able to enter for this. And I'm going to be giving away a copy of Monster Prom now. The reason I'm giving this away is because it has overwhelmingly positive reviews wow. on Steam, which you don't see very often. Uh, so overwhelmingly positive. It's a dating sim. So I, I was Joe here. Uh, comedy <laughs> multiplayer choices matter. So uh, this is Monster Prom. It has very good ratings. This game has been talked and, about in our Discord because this looks familiar. Somebody was talking or posting a screenshot about this. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but hey, it's a dating sim. We know how much our Discord loves dating sims. Can I enter to win? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> if you want to play this, go ahead. You're allowed to. Yeah, great. With all the other games I play. Um, yeah. this on hey, this one might be the one that just catches your interest. Yeah, the infection, the dating sim podcast. There's, I, dude, it, can help, it can help you prep for packs. Like, oh, yeah. It'll be great. We go to the ray yeah. gun. We go to like, when we go to the ray gun lounge. It'll be great. It even has multiplayer. So you could wow. do one to four players on your dating sim. I just Damn. don't even know how that would work. I, 
will you buy me and my friends three copies of the game so we can I know, play? We need we need more copies that we can all do the uh, multiplayer. Yeah, the harshest of survival so. games says Head Neophyte. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, hey, you can enter for game giveaways. We do them live each. Val, thank you for entering. We appreciate it. Uh, each and every week, we, we, want this game. we do a game giveaway here on the show. You can join us live here, 7 p.m. Eastern on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash infection podcast. All right, we're an hour into the show. We've covered zero, uh, count them, zero survival gaming news. With that being the case, let's talk about one of my favorite games, Dead by Daylight. And uh, the Generator Simulator 2019, as people like to call it, uh, when they're mocking it, a lot of fun. Bingo, boom, shakalaka. Thank you, um, uh, thank you, Lock Lori says on behalf of uh, on behalf of <laughs> Richard's Space Force. Perfect. Um, <laughs> so, so we got that uh, we got that all squared away. But uh, we talked a couple weeks ago about Dead by Daylight that they are or were doing a total rework of Freddy, and. Um, it was on the test server for a couple of days, and the full update is out today. It is uh, 3.1.0, and it is in there. Um, they added four new languages, Latin America, Latin American, Spanish, Dutch, Turkish, and Swedish. So they've got four new language supports, and they've changed the lobby music back to the default music. I have to rem- I don't really remember the differences, but I'll have to go take a look. Mm. They've done some balance changes. Um but the new the nightmare changes in there, and we talked about those a couple weeks ago. So you can go ahead and listen to those yep. uh, back in a couple weeks. But the new Freddy WeWork is in. This is a pretty big update. They don't do them all the time, so you can see here. I'll show it up on screen for our video listeners. They do uh, they do a lot of fixes, a lot of miscellaneous things. So a uh, pretty big update, and they've done some balancing and and things like that that everybody uh, everybody yeah. This game is that's very vital for this game is trying to get the balance right of the characters versus the yeah, it is. It, it's tough. It's very tough. So quick update to Dead by Daylight. If you want to check out the Freddy, we'll probably do this. On, if I'm around Friday night, I might not be. If we are around Friday night, we'll probably be playing Dead by Daylight. So uh, if you're going to check around for, uh, if you're going to be around for that, have Dead by Daylight installed. It'll be a, uh, it'll be a good, it'll be a good time. We'll play the new Freddy rework. Cool. Yeah. I, I will have to play it with all my expansions. Maybe I can play the new. Yeah. Freddy. Is he a, is he a DLC, right? Yeah, Freddy is a DLC. Okay, well, I can play him so you can see him. How about that? And kiss my ass, Brian. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, anyway. Okay, all right. Oh, go ahead. Whatever. Your show. Go uh, ahead, take so it over. I'm let's, done. <laughs> let's, let's talk about a survival game. Yeah, sure. Uh, Which one? Uh, you want to talk about Child so, and Red Dead Redemption? Last, Which one's the Last child? Oasis. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll go to Last Oasis first. Last Oasis, they did do a, announce a date. So September 3rd is when they're planning to unlock that game and this is the weird kind is, of max mad max style kind of game right well it's got those uh kind of like not not steampunk but like the kind of weird mechanical style creatures the goal so we we explained this a while ago remember you make these gigantic kind of like wings what yeah but they're done in a style of uh, was it da vinci is it a da vinci i don't know i don't know what that means i mean i know da vinci so da vinci made he made schematics and things for kind of oh. crazy machines hmm. and these are kind of done in that style of are, something that he would have made in they're like wooden bugs. would have made so yeah and so the goal is that you have to kind of move around so it's a big world but you have to migrate from section of the map map to section of the map in order to survive and i think it's kind of like the gas in a uh you know a br type of game i think that something is following you and you have to keep ahead of it. That's why it's last oasis. You're all trying to make it to the last place uh, that you can survive and, uh, and, and be the last one to ma- actually make it there. Cause every, there's a bunch of people working to get there uh, and you'll fight each other some, but you also have to build and then reach this last point. So, and then you've successfully done it. So it's interesting. It's a different concept. We haven't really seen this happen in a, uh, yeah, Nisco says, I still don't know the full story. I haven't read the whole story about it. I mean, I don't know the whole backstory of it. The, 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 I do know that the Earth's not turning anymore. And so, like, the sun or, you know, whatever it is, the darkness, something is is chasing them. And so they have to keep ahead of it. There you go. Thank you, Nisco. You just repeated what I said. I forgive you. 
<laughs> there you go. But I mean that yeah, that's the story. But the, but the whole goal, the whole mechanic, is that you're being chased and forced to keep moving forward, and because of the the planets. So should be interesting. It'll be uh, interesting to see if it works as they're claiming. What if they'll be uh, a that's, I bet you they will be. I right. bet you that there'll be some representation. We'll have to find them. Yeah, because it's coming out right. I mean, like September 3rd is what, two days after PAX ends or something? I wonder if, yeah, if they're kind of doing their announce at PAX. Yeah, it would make sense to have a big booth there and get people to talk about the game. Most people don't get home yeah. until the Monday or Tuesday anyway. So it comes out on Tuesday. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I hope maybe they'll be with somebody else though. That'd be kind of neat. Maybe they won't be. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, but we'll we'll try to find them and then see yeah. see if we can get an interview and some copies of the game for Nick. Okay. He always complained about me getting copies of the game, mm -hmm. so I figured this time I'm, we'll I'm, get them. I don't you. want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you do you have a preference what we talk about? Next? No, no. It's your show. Go go for it. Wherever you okay. whatever you want to talk about. Well, let's talk about Actually, ROE we'll... really quick. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting going. So uh, Ring of Elysium, they put out, of course, this is a China game pretty much, uh, but they put out two patches. Remember, they did come out of alpha, so uh, they're not putting out nearly as many patches as before. Yeah. But uh, they did. They are doing what they're calling their S4 heroic challenges have been unlocked, and uh, they've made some changes to the training mode. Uh, they do have that. We talked about it, the Amazon Cup, which we were kind of surprised to see a tournament being hosted by Amazon. Yeah. Uh, but they're but they are doing that. You know, they're doing all the qualifiers. So if you're interested, uh, I think that uh I think that they that it's happening July 2nd through August 5th for the qualifiers. So you have some time to play now up until the 5th. Uh and then they'll have the regional championships for North America on August 11th. And the prize for winning that is $60,000, which isn't huge. But I guess if one person wins that, is that the prize pool? So I'm not sure how they're distributing that across that is various winners. Very low for a gaming tournament. I mean, for Amazon. I mean, come on. Well, that's what's well. Remember though, this is an online tournament, so typically yeah. on those, there are different things. There's like world world championship tournaments that are typically done in person at an arena, and those prize pools prize pools can be hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars big big money yeah. but these online tournaments i think the the idea in my opinion is you could do them a little more often and you yeah. do a small because it's hard to have somebody sponsor when you're not doing something in person where there's a big stage and you can put logos and you can't touch yeah. it like you can go to that tournament, you can touch the tournament it's there it's a, you, the whole surrounding when you just do an online thing and stream it on twitch it's probably a lot harder to get, to get companies to shell out sums of cash to sponsor yeah. because it's just, it's not, it's, it's not a tangible object. It's not, it's, yep. you can go, Oh great. Some guys streaming on Twitch. Congratulations. Well now, now one thing that they do that I guess the benefit of doing one like this is they have incentives. So if you enter into it, you can get a Twitch accessory, which is just a little Twitch badge that you can wear in game. They have a Twitch outfit. Uh, uh, but the, some physical prizes are giving away. They're going to be giving away. Well, I guess the, here's a digital one that you can you can go to a store and actually get. But the Steam gift cards will be giving away some of those and Twitch bits. Uh, but they'll also be giving away two uh, gaming PCs. So wow. you know that will be uh, that will be something that I guess people would want to enter for. I, I'm not. I don't care so much about the skins. Oh, I'm all into the skins. Be, yeah, that's me. Yeah, but it'd be fun to to win a gaming PC or Steam gift cards. Yeah, I could use a new gaming PC. If somebody wants to donate one to me, you can send me an email, nick at infectionpodcast.com. Um, mm -hmm. Funny you talk about, oh, but, uh, funny you talk about Amazon. Um, there's a story in here about Amazon, uh, which is interesting. Um, we haven't really heard a whole lot. They, uh, our, our boy uh, Smedley moved over to Amazon, oh, three years ago. And uh, he's working on Amazon they forked Unreal and are creating their own engine called Lumberyard. There's they they for, they forked um was it Cry you? Engine. This, excuse me, they forked Cry Engine and creating their own version called Lumberyard. And yep. up to this point, it's been like a lot of Amazon and Google projects, a whole bunch of talk, a whole bunch of 
things are this thing, that thing, thing's going to be released, that thing's going to be released. They, I don't believe they've released a game yet. Yeah. I know they've announced a couple, um, but they haven't released one. And we've got another new uh, game to add to the list of possible releases. And uh, according to a report, Amazon is looking to um, develop and we would assume publish an MMO game that is in the Lord of the Rings universe in the, in the middle yeah. earth. So this appears to be, and this actually is in conjunction with a TV series that is a supposedly coming out in 2021. Um, that's going to be a Lord of the Rings universe based TV series. So this would maybe all be in conjunction with that. I've been very disappointed though with Amazon and Falcon points out that their their game New World looks pretty looks pretty good and it does look pretty good but don't you think it would have been good for them just to get something out there on the market cuz to at to this point it's yeah. all talk and I'm not concerned that Amazon isn't going to be able to publish a game or deliver it but there's you can't look at them and say oh this game they actually did a good job with it's been three. Like I bet over you there's three years. so much work. I bet there's so much work going into the back end to try to fix CryEngine. That I think it's probably a lot more work than they expected. Because <laughs> I, I think that's part of the problem. Um, and also, one thing I wanted, one reason I posted this article is because what what is the other Lord of the Rings MMO out there currently? Is there a Lord of the Rings MMO? Mm-hmm. Is this a trick question? No, I'm serious. Oh. Totally serious. Um, uh, it, oh, it's oh, look, Lord of the Rings Online. Yeah, Latro. So Lord of the Rings Online. Yeah. Who owns that, or who who do, who has that? I don't know. Daybreak Games. Oh, no, yeah, but they're so maintaining it. And ma they're managing it. Maintaining. They now are. They are now in charge of it. Oh. So it's Daybreak Games. So isn't it somewhat strange that Smedley and the company he's working for? <laughs> Is is pretty much putting out a game that will be the only competition for one of the only games left at Daybreak Games. Mm. I just I thought it was kind of strange. Big old middle that finger. I, <laughs> yes. Uh, so that I just was like, hmm, that seems to be on purpose. I, I just wow. Yeah. Uh, so that I mean that is speculation. But that is a big coincidence. There are not many games left at Daybreak Games, and that is one of the only ones. Another fun fact is my neighbor. Oh my has, God. My neighbor has L O T R O on his license plate because he met his wife playing Lord of the Rings online. Oh my God. Yes. So, fun fact. Wow. This is crazy. Yeah. This is like, so I just, this is all happening. Weird. What do you have to do with this? Are, are you developing? Have, are you have you taken a job to work at Amazon? No, I'm not developing Lord of the Rings Damn. online. Sorry, I was really hoping or the MMO game. Finally, we have an inside <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> that is, that is kind of interesting, though. Now, what Smedley is he actually in charge of Amazon Games, or is he in charge of that one game that he's making? Because I feel like originally we, um, we were told he was in charge of Amazon Games, but no, I don't appear I that that's he, happened. That's not the case. I think he's in charge of two games. I, I think he's in charge of, like, a couple games. Okay. He's not in charge of the whole studio. I think he's in charge of one undisclosed title. Yes. One that he, that's not. And then he's also doing stuff with that. Um, it's like the medieval... Big, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Yeah, I, it's I, not I New World. Done. Yeah, New World. Oh, okay. So he's working with that, and then there's one that they haven't actually announced, and so there's no details. But I think it is more modern. It is, because I remember a backpacks last year. I don't know if you remember this, Brian. Smedley, while we were at PAX, he was at PAX as well, I think. Uh, he was tweeting yeah. that they were working on vehicle and plane and helicopter mechanics. And yeah. we th obviously the New World game would not make sense for plane helicopter mechanics and um yeah. that was last year i don't believe we've heard anything since and ph of um ph brings up the fact that they did lay off i think we talked about it they laid off a, a number yeah. of people uh, back by e3 so but here's the good thing though with this being amazon they've got they've got more money it doesn't matter 
Like they can take yeah. their time. They can be slow. They don't have to rush anything. And it really doesn't matter. It's the same way with Google and Microsoft. It just, they are so well, big. It doesn't matter. And I think they're so big that they can turn around and they, if they see that a project just isn't melding, if it's not coming together, if they, for the team or the idea isn't working, they'll shut it down. Yes, they will. I mean, that, I mean, so I think that is the difference between them and most other game development studios. There's game development studios that will just keep pushing a concept and never let it go and release whatever happens to come out the other side. Well, cause it's a lot harder when you've put all of your eggs in a basket of a game and that's all you're capable of doing. I mean, if Amazon's game studio is a total failure, like an absolute failure, they waste hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, even it does not yeah. matter. Yep. Yeah. It's not going to be a loss. No, it's, it's, it's totally irrelevant. They pay less than zero income tax like they did last year. Yep. So, yeah, so this will be interesting to see. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be way more advanced. Uh, you know, there's people that are really big fans of the whole Middle Earth uh, type of lore. And so you'll get a lot of people from that. Um, also, that, that it's it's kind of like a casual dr Dungeons and Dragons. Um, or maybe people that are wanting something that's similar to EverQuest, but newer. Uh, I think that it, I think it'll scratch a lot of different itches for people that are waiting for a modern type of MO, MMO to come out, uh, you know, because WoW is its own type of thing. Like mm -hmm. there's people that play WoW, but there's a different audience that just enjoys the lore and they enjoy kind of the feeling of, of these type of games. And so I think you'll get a lot of people that will come and play this if it's made reasonably well. Which, who knows? I mean, it'll be interesting to see what their game they, engine actually can do. They've got the talent and money to make that happen. So, if they don't yeah. do it, it's a it's an execution issue, I would think. Yep. They have the money to get the people to make it happen, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah. see if they actually release it. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, I mean, one would uh, hope. So, uh, now, let's talk about a halfway survival game. Okay. Uh, PUBG. Ah, yeah. So they came out. Well, they came out with their Survivor Pass Four, and so if you want to go check that out, it's pass.pubg.com, and this is coming on well tomorrow, so the twenty fourth. Oh. Uh, they're releasing this new season four. They actually have a video if you want to play. Yeah. And this is a cinematic trailer. Let me get so this loaded up. It's not even. Uh, it's not gameplay, but it does tell some of the story of supposedly why we are in this world that PUBG is placed in. When I was a boy, I watched my world explode. I lost everything in that fiery nightmare. But what I found in the rubble of my childhood awakened me. I was the first lone survivor of Erengel. But I would not be the last. The island showed the scared boy that he could be a survivor. That's what I want for you. To meet your true self. Will you embrace who you're meant to be? Or is this all you are? Will you find a person strong enough to conquer their fear? Or will you die because you were too weak to understand? Yes, my friend. Everyone is searching for themselves. That search ends here. The place I once called home. Welcome to my battlegrounds. Whoa. Was it, I believe that's the first time we've seen anything like that, Brian. Yes. And so, so 
What is this? So this is kind of giving the back lore mm -hmm. of why all these people are being dropped onto an island and fighting each other. Hunger uh, Games. So this, it, 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 yeah, it's somewhat of a Hunger Games. There's yeah. some guy who went through war and he wants other people to experience, I guess, what he experienced. <laughs> a little dark if you yeah. ask me. Yeah, and so, uh, it's, so he has all these cameras and he's watching and kind of directing everything from his desk. This is, and uh, this is, what do you have a king or a queen chess pawn? Uh, like ve very, yeah. very devious. Yeah, Be yeah. And so, and so this is uh, at least they're putting some story to it uh, because for people that remember years ago, it seems like we talked about this where they pretty much took this idea from a game or from a movie uh, called uh, the ex the exact same thing as what this was originally released on H one Z one as. I mean, the, the, the movie had the exact same name, Battle Royale. It looked very similar. Uh, Brennan actually had a lot of the same outfits as the original Chinese or Japanese movie. You know, so this is, I, I think they were probably concerned about getting sued at some point now that they were making money. Uh, and I'm assuming that's why they're kind of now creating their own backstory. And the even the visuals are different on this. Like if you look, it doesn't have that kind of, uh, you know, girls in miniskirts type of a feel. I didn't see any of that in this whole uh, film. No. And so I wonder if they're kind of getting away from that, you know, because that was Brendan's thing and he's not really in charge there anymore. He, he's doing other projects. I don't think he has anything to do with this. Yeah, he's, he's doing his own projects and they've kind of taken this back over. And so I think they're kind of leaving that Battle Royale theme uh, and going with this more backstory style theme and getting away from that movie because th there is a huge risk of them getting sued by whoever owns the rights to that movie, uh, even though it's in Japan. Hmm. So, um, what are the dates on this? This starts July 24th, so tomorrow. Tomorrow. And, um, so in this, there is a, um, there's a is this the the new weapon is in here the deagle yeah, they also redid uh in the map so a wrangle looks different yeah uh, if you can actually see the layout uh they did a lot of visual updates so if you click one of those yellow or the orangish uh things you can see on there the before and after and you can actually drag oh wow and they'll yeah they'll show some of the visual updates and how it just looks different uh, oh, so you can wow. click through the map yeah. points right below that and you can see they really filled out and just made it look better so that uh, you know they're they're giving it the polish that's some hdr yep yep so it's definitely got more polish um but they uh they, they're adding some new items to it and and it should be it should be interesting to see how people take to it tomorrow hmm. yeah um Let's see. So there's a couple things in here, though. The, the ledge grab that we talked about was on test. They wanted people to test. That's in there. The deagle is in there. That new vehicle is in there. This is an update we talked about yep. maybe three weeks ago. It's all of yeah, those. Yeah, it was on test. Yeah, all those things. The gas can changes. The now them they're actually used as explosives and whatnot. So that's all. Um, that's all there. And they actually have a cool video too that um, we're not going to watch now, but it's it's probably not in english as most of them are not there's one called the uh, it, it isn't yes yeah. yeah, unfortunately you can go watch it with the subtitles though it's a planning of season four and they actually go through and they interview people and i'll tell you what but one thing you could do if you click on ledge grab uh, you don't have to play audio for it but it does show the ledge grab you can actually see okay him running and, and grabbing the ledge and pulling himself yeah. up yeah i mean it's very very similar to what we would expect and Yep. As similar, similar to as when they added, um, uh, uh, the vaulting with they when they allowed you to kind of climb up the side of buildings and jump over walls and things like that. It really changed the dynamic of the game. Now, I don't believe yep. this so much. They always show this in games. This constant roof jumping from roof to roof to roof. People really don't move like that. In my opinion, that like that's not going to happen. Can can you scroll back a little bit? I just sorry, I I see something that just catches yes. my eye. Yeah. Um, so when jump? he's getting ready to run down this roof, just look at it's called IK, but look at his feet and how they touch the roof. You notice how they're floating? Yeah. So uh, what you can do is if you do it correctly, there's a thing called IK that will actually make it so the feet 
set and touch down on on items like uh, whatever you're standing on correctly okay. i just if you if you look at that you can see it's just like he's floating on top of the roof because it's an angle that's kind of hard when you don't use ik sorry i just noticed that it really stuck out to me you didn't see it i saw it but i mean it didn't stick out to me okay that i noticed that kind of stuff yeah clearly <laughs> working on this stuff has ruined me like, it makes yeah. it when i watch a game i see that those things you become a real snob is what they would call yeah. it you were oh, like they should be snob. having they should be having ik and the foot should be be actually sitting at the angle of the roof as you're running down that's what it should be doing I, ik or riot make it happen reddit yeah that's uh, well <laughs> change.org yeah. i understand i understand why they don't do it but well whatever. now you got to give an okay quick a quick explanation why don't they do it uh performance yeah okay well, probably in this game performance just, it, matters it, 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 this is not a single yeah, player performance game. really matters for them so they're just making it to where it works and it for what they're doing it works i mean most people don't care i mean look at we put up with h1z1 for how long too long and that had none ago. of this yeah none of this no but what i was saying back to before we were talking about what, what does ik stand for inverse kinematics okay back we were, before we were talking about ik this whole oh you see this in every game that has uh, uh roof ledge holding and jumping like this they always show people just jumping from roof to roof to roof i have never seen that happen it's always yeah. you get up on a roof to get a high point and then you peek around a little bit, you move, you shoot, and then you run away. Like people aren't yeah. jumping parallel on roofs above your group. I have never seen that. Yeah. I just wish they'd give real I, examples, which is like a whole bunch of people up on roofs looking at each other like birds. Because <laughs> that's yeah. exactly what happens. Throwing grenades, missing them big, big time, and that's it. Bigly. Yeah, bigly missing grenades, and then end up getting caught in the gas because they spent too much time peering at people from across the map. So, I mean, that for this, it would be I would probably use this just because I was a little bit short on reaching the other roof. Yeah. And so, this is probably where this will come more in handy is, okay, I didn't quite make the jump, but it's going to grab the ledge for me and pull me up. But the point is, is you, I just, I don't like how it's displayed. They added like, oh, all of this crazy roof fighting is going to be going. No. ROE's got this. You can climb up on roofs in ROE. Realm Royale's got it. People don't jump from roof to roof to f fight each other. It just doesn't happen. It's a cool well, mechanic. Maybe it, will, it will change how the game plays. But this notion that you'll be running to the left and a whole squad is going to be running up right next to you, but they're up on roofs and you don't see them is nonsense. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, we'll it's just too far-fetched. Breaking well, my we'll, have to, we'll have to try playing this maybe on Friday or Saturday. We absolutely need to play PUBG. It from I have been yeah. told now. I was told last week. I talked about uh, Barbie. Talked to me. I talked to uh, a couple of other people as well over the past week about. They messaged me based on the comments I made last week. Said the exact same thing. They are. They really do feel that the game has changed dramatically. Yeah. Which which. I mean, it was never a bad game. It was just stale but bread. It seems like they've really gone and polished and like added. It'd be interesting to see how it feels now. It's just it was just boring. It's not that it, the game was never like unplayable. It's just like ah, I just I don't want I don't want to play it anymore. I've played hours of falling to driving to Georgia, Paul. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. I, I don't I don't want to do it anymore. I'll just watch a twitch get a loot loot for loot for 20 minutes and then and die, die. First i mean it's like oh my god I just like i can't do it i'm gonna lose my mind but apparently it's changed a lot so that's good okay yeah we'll have to try it so make sure everybody has it installed and updated and we'll we maybe we'll jump in over the weekend yeah uh judd saying battle royale is just boring to me yeah i mean it is it is too, too much of the same but there are things you can do to make you know it's so funny is people talk about the repetition of battle royale and it is it's, it's very repetitive loot spawn loot die reloop that's it that's the whole process but it's so yeah. funny because i can't do that all day but i can play a game like league of legends or a game like dead by daylight which are in dead by daylight specifically incredibly repetitive incredibly yeah. repetitive 
what is so different about those games that that I can't handle with the BR? Is it the setup time? Is it the emotional attachment to the not emotional, but is it the attachment to the items that you looted? Why is it that people can play the hell out of games like Dead by Daylight League, games that have very similar repetition things? Yeah. But can't play more than two or, th- two or three rounds of BR. And you can say Dead by Daylight is boring. That's fine. It's got a very large player base. So yeah. it's not. I'm not saying it's everybody's cup of tea, but if you sit back and look at the amount of people that are playing a game like Dead by Daylight compared to what it is, which is a game that is very repetitive, you do the same mission, you're, you're tasked with the same thing every day, there are there's uh, there, uh, 24 hour peaks, are upwards of 25,000 people. And if you look at their seven day peak, you're talking about 30,000 people playing the game. That's no, I mean, yeah. that beats out a majority of the games that we talk about in terms of player style yeah. or in terms of player numbers. It beats out half, at least half of them. Yeah. So why are people playing a game like that? How can, how can they do that? I think it does come down to the loss of there's so much setup time with minimal things happening, a very repetitive action happening. And then the payoff is is many times very little. It's because yeah, you die, you know, in the first gunfight or the first two gun. You know, we only get two gunfights in. Or with Dead by Daylight, you, it's more of a consistent pattern through the whole thing. Maybe it's the likelihood of success that's the problem. Yeah, I've got a very low. I've I don't I've I don't believe I've ever won a PUBG game by myself. And and I did once. Yeah. Once I, once. Yes. Um, and I don't it, remember it, but. yeah, in, in a squad, I've won maybe a handful of times in a game like dead by Daylight or a game like league of legends. In the case of league, you have a half, you have a 50, 50 shot of winning and in dead by daylight. Yeah. It's, it's, it's technically 50, 50, but not really, but it, maybe it's the yeah. likelihood of getting the, the payoff. There's less, there's less dejection, I guess, you know, less of the, uh, less failure. Like it, you get that emotional payoff on a more consistent basis where you could play all night on PUBG. And I, I find that playing in a group is more fun Absolutely. because you tend to last longer and it's not so much, even if you, you know, you have the chance of getting revived, but also even if you die, you still get to kind of enjoy the game through the other player. So I think that it, depending on how you play PUBG, I think the people that play in groups tend to enjoy it a little bit more if they're not constant players that are going to guarantee a spot in the top 10. Head Neophyte says, isn't every game play, level up, loot, unlock? It is. But why do some games, why is it that some games can do that successfully yeah. and people aren't bored, frustrated, annoyed? And don't get me wrong. It's not like people aren't playing PUBG. That's not what I'm saying. I just wonder what, I just, I, I just, I wonder what happens. Why is a game like, the, and I can only think about games that I'm playing. Why is a game like Dead by Daylight so popular when it is the definition of repetition? It is the yeah. definition. You don't do anything different from game to game. It's the same damn thing. Not a complaint, but a game like Fortnite or PUBG or ROE or Realm, it's it's it, it just doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to capture my interest. Yeah. Well, there's probably the skill gap is less likely. You can when you're playing a game, let's say like Fortnite. Mm-hmm. You're eventually going to run across that person that's way better than you. Absolutely, most people right? are. Yeah, most people are. And so, but then if you're playing a game like Dead by Daylight, you'll get into a match. Maybe you'll get in a match where somebody's just way better. That happens a lot. But but maybe you'll get into a match where they're all about consistent with you, and you'll be able to play the whole match with no issue. That's pretty common. Yeah. So I think that that I think that that probably plays a little bit into it as well. Where by the time you get to the end of Fortnite, you're going to run into someone that's just going to slaughter you i mean that's just how it works nisco says people rage hard in skilled games and casual games people don't rage as hard i agree i I agree with that totally i i definitely noticed that now i still get you know i'm still throwing rages i'm still throwing things especially with this new team fight mode in league oh my god i'm throwing bottles of water across the room i mean it's bad um but it's definitely in the cat in the casual environment you're right it's just not that but in PUBG, you're you're putting it on the line, right? It's you know, yeah. you gotta win. Gotta if you don't come in first place, it's a it's a there's no point of playing. But some yeah. of those other games, 
that's not necessary. It's, it's not the whole Ricky Bobby. If you're not first, you're last kind of uh, kind of mentality. A lot of times it is, but it isn't always. Yeah. You can still have a good game where you're like, oh, that was close. Yeah. PUBG, that's not PUBG, if you come in second place, you are pissed. Yeah. And if you come in 88th place, like I do, you're also pissed. So, so yeah, no, it's, 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 suck. yeah, it's, it's just, it, it's, 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 unless you're winning the game, in my opinion, again, I'm no expert, but unless you're winning the, winning the game, it's kind of a loss. Yep. So I don't know. I think it's interesting. From a, so no, okay. Standpoint. So you brought up, you brought up, uh, League of Legends and Team I, Fight Tactics. I they did. actually put out a patch. Oh, they did actually. Uh, they put out new new, new players. 9.14. And they said that you can expect to have a patch for the patch notes for this every week now. Oh, nice. So they should be putting out regular updates. Uh, and they said, uh, I guess League of Legends schedules different or they do, they do a weekly patch on there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't play League of Legends really. So, uh, but yeah, so they're going to be that for this one. And they have in there, uh, new character balancing and bug fixes, uh, some interesting things. So, if uh, if you played that game, check it out. And uh, and they that will, they'll have another one next week. So it'll be interesting to see how this game. It is di very different. It is a lot of fun. We've been playing it, and as you said, it's it's something that it seems casual at first, mm. but there's a lot of strategy to it, and a lot of learning of characters and what their abilities are and what they can do and balancing them. I think this is a lot bigger move than people at this point understand. It's widely talked about, but you have to really think about it. This appears to be Riot's effort of bringing League, the name League, because it's League of Legends Teamfight Tactics, to mobile. Mm -hmm. This is by yeah. far, this is a very good mobile game, if they end up yeah. doing that. It's much more in-depth than that. It's, it's much more hardcore than... And the uh, controls are perfect for that. Yeah, it's a lot more... It's, I would say it's a lot more complex than Hearthstone. I, I yeah. think I, I played enough Hearthstone. Uh, I think I, I mean, could say that uh, Hearthstone's a I, little bit. Some different. people get because there's a lot of strategy with like what cards you're doing. I mean, it, I think it's very similar. As it far is. As I think it's a little more hardcore. Though. I think it's a, I think it's a little more complex. Absolutely, there's a lot more going on with the random buy wheel that comes up and things like that. There's a Hearthstone is a. I think yeah, maybe throughout the game, yes. but, but I think that um, Hearthstone you're trying to build up a certain deck. Like I think there's a lot more on the back end. With Hearthstone, where Teamfight Tactics seems to be more of during the game, you're coming up with these tactics. You're like, you're working it during the game. Yeah. Teamfight Tactics. Yeah. Breach. So, but it's, I never so, yeah, This will be a cool it, moment. It is game. a fun game. Yeah. I'm looking forward to playing and I'm on my sure, I can't imagine that they wouldn't because if you look at the controls, like it's so basic, it's perfect for, perfect, made for a tablet. It's made for a phone too. I mean, I don't know what size yeah, I mean, this that'd be iPhone small. is. Uh, but I, this is if they can get the game, maybe on mobile it's it's eight eight people now. Maybe on mobile it's five or four. You cut the game t t uh, game time down. And maybe yeah. the levels are quicker. That would be really cool if you could play a game in ten minutes from start to finish. If you won 10, 15 minutes, that would be kind of neat. Yeah, and I, I in that game it is. I think that you know playing uh, like Hearthstone. It's just either you get kind of get to a point where you're like, ah, I just don't feel like playing it. Team Bite Tactics seems to be, it, it changes up enough and you don't get stuck in a match with like yep. one lousy person. With with uh, Hearthstone, you'll get somebody who's just delays every single match and like just, it gets annoying. Yeah, but in Hearthstone, this, you, the, you have a deck of cards, all right? And you have yeah. to build the deck uh, and you bring it yes, into you the have game. To build the deck outside. But that's, that's my point. Saying. Then during the game, you get people that take their max amount of time and they're trying to stall you out and just make the game last as long as possible. It that's the big difference, though. There's no outside yeah. the game mechanic to this. You just, it, you random character in game. Yep. And then it's, it's all about strategy during that particular play. Yeah. So I, th I think it'll be, it'll be an interesting move for Riot to get League on, because there is other competition to League actual league like vainglory and stuff on mobile um it for, for league and dota it'll be interesting to see how they because it only makes sense that they try to push into that market i mean you look yeah. at the amount of money that the who's the company that owns candy crush um uh, king? king it is king but yeah it's king but there's another name too 
billions of dollars they make. Yeah. Billions of dollars. Yeah, yeah it's a huge market. Uh, a lot of people just don't realize it, yeah. how much money these companies are really making. Mm -hmm. Big money. So, uh, speaking of big money games, oh, okay. yeah. uh, DayZ, oh, you know, they have that new Survivor money. Games. Uh, so, they were going to be sending out the Alpha Keys when? here today. Oh. Spo well, it was supposed to be, actually, it was supposed to be yesterday, oh, and I haven't heard any more. Hold on, I got to check uh, the email. Yeah, so they said that that they're fixing last-minute issues uh, with the Alpha Keys, but they will be sent out in a few hours. So and then they said, we will update when the mailing happened. We the apologize for the inconvenience. And then if you go look at their Daisy Twitter feed, they didn't update. That, is, that is the last... Oh, jeez. Um, that is the last message that they sent. Uh, so, it, well, they did send one that said, with a few hours delay, we have sent the first wave of Alpha Keys. So they've sent 5,000. I must have gotten left out in the... Left out in the rain, Brian. Didn't get my yeah, keys. So you're, you're not in the first 5,000. So no, I'm maybe definitely not. I signed up later. like seven days after they announced it. No. Okay. So if, if you were one of the first people to sign up for that, you should be getting. I'm very distraught. I can't play DayZ anymore. Hmm. I, yeah, I don't know the game. So I didn't even bother signing up. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't. You're not eligible. It's a DayZ. I know. Well, let me. So. Yeah. I'm sure they give it to uh, you, though. I, I mean, if I message them, tell them who I am. I'll send it right over. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Um, oh, yeah, so qu real quick on that, though. Uh, maybe you missed last week's show. They're doing a thing. It's called Survivor Games with a Z, and it is very similar to uh, an H1Z1, King of the Kill, PUBG. It's just it's a Battle Royale mode. Our, con our, our thought last week on it was this is a good way to get people to reinstall the game and start talking about DayZ if they're not necessarily interested in the half-assed standalone zombie game that they've built so good yeah. move on their part in my opinion yep. well it, it, it's how it goes. yet to be seen but it could be well okay so let's talk about another br game okay. that but you know was a flash in the pan i mean i guess people are still playing for it, not a, for, but and, and for not no specific reason as well another one of them yeah uh, apex legends they put out an update now this is pretty much just fixes though okay so uh there was one two three four five, six, seven fixes, and then season one stats have been temporarily removed uh -oh. as they because they have issues with it. So they're following the old H1Z1 motto. If it doesn't work right, <laughs> just remove it. Yes. Uh, so that is a, not a huge patch. I mean, this is a big studio. EA Games, uh, you know, it's, it makes this, right? Uh, and so they just did a list of like six, six or seven patches hmm. for their latest updates. So that's all. Uh, now, there was another article in Bleeping Computer talking about how uh, Apex Legends pits cheaters against each other. So they're trying to make it, of course, every developer is always trying to figure out how to deal with, uh, yeah, sorry, Respawn is the one who makes makes this, but their Published. publisher. Correct. Yes, by EA Games. Uh, but they're, they're always trying to balance out uh, cheaters and you know get it to where cheaters aren't affecting the games of other players uh or people with using aim bots things like that uh and so this what they're doing is putting them in their own area so huh. they're trying to they're trying to use machine learning to kind of figure out the behavior models and detect and auto ban the cheaters uh you know they're also requiring uh two-factor authentication for certain regions on high risk accounts. I would assume that would means China when they say certain regions. Uh, and then also, you know, trying to identify spam accounts. Uh, you know, of course they're always watching for new cheats. Uh, and then what they're doing is they're matchmaking the people that are detected. So based on those, the behaviors, the people that are detected as cheaters or spammers, they're going into their own lobbies so they can still play but they're being separated from the other players. That's freaking hilarious. So, I never would have thought about dealing with something that way. It's almost so I guess, simple. You know, I mean, I guess, you know, rather than banning them and creating the whole thing where they're, you know, they're kind of making a game out of getting banned and rebuying. Uh, and the people can't say that they're, I mean, this is a free to play game, right? So, 
uh, what's the point of going and banning them? They're well, just going to recreate. They are banning them, but it seems like game. It seems like people that are teetering on the edge of is this a cheater? Is this not a cheater? They're putting yeah, just them, put them in and see, and then yeah, see like, what happens. It's like a limited time quarantine. It's like, a, well, and, like and a, on this, I mean, but it says you know they're they're hoping that they'll just find it boring when they don't have an advantage anymore. Oh, hmm. so maybe they're keeping. Maybe they're not banning. Them. I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't think they're actually banning hmm. banning them. They're just putting them in their own matches and that it which it is true because i remember playing there's only one time i installed a cheat and it was an open source game on linux oh and every, every single person in this game because it was open source uh was cheating and so it was no fun for me to play the game because everybody was using um you know esp and they were doing all of this stuff so i installed it once i played for five minutes I was like, this is still boring. Like, this is boring when, when everybody can see where everybody's at and everybody, it was just, it was stupid, incredibly stupid. And so I think that's kind of the field that they're going for. Where you get in there and you're like, eh, this is just no fun. Like, I'm not killing people that have no clue what's going on. Who can ESP better? Er. Yeah. <laughs> who has the better, who has the better software? Yeah. Wow. That's a smart, it's so crazy. We have talked about it on this show for five years. How do you deal with hackers? How do you deal with hackers? I had never thought about this. I've never heard yeah. anybody even say this. Yeah, because then they're not going and creating another account and re and starting from scratch. Like they're just they're playing still, so they're keeping them occupied. Yeah, and they they don't know. Yeah, they may not know it, realize it right away. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that becomes kind of the new standard of hey, how to deal with these type of it's, players. You're just dumping them all into one lobby. Wow. And Nisco says Titanfall was the thing. first game. Yeah, same company, Respawn. There you go. Um, well, also Fortnite. We talked a little bit about Fortnite earlier, but they well, released released their nine point four. Hmm? Hold on one second. I want to finish on this EA thing. The only okay, problem with this, uh, not the problem. One of the um, key points with this though is you've got to have damn good auto or cheat detection for something like this to work. That's part yeah. of the thing with this is, yes, it's a good idea to quarantine them and put them in their own little silo, but if you have garbage cheat detection, it doesn't matter. Because yeah. if they're not getting, if their cheats aren't getting detected, if you're only detecting 30% of the hackers and quarantining them, you might as well not be doing any of them. Because you got 70% yeah. of them still ESPing me from across the map. So who cares? If they have a very, I would love to hear what the number is. They'll never publish it because yeah. they can yeah. and it doesn't make sense to. Could you imagine if it was like 85%? 85% of cheaters that are, that are, 85% of cheats are getting detected and they're getting quarantined? That's a huge number. Yeah. So it's it, a double edged thing. A, it, I guess with this, they get to watch someone longer too and detect that type of behavior. I mean, because this thing is they're trying to create machine learning so they can have machine learning sit there and just watch all these players that are yeah, not playing that's a against buzzword. each other. Anti cheat is machine learning. Yeah, but. But a lot of times it's it's manual as far as them creating the algorithms and trying to detect it. If they can watch enough cheaters, they can actually use machine learning to detect the behaviors. Where if you look at what which one Z one was doing, I mean it was one guy <laughs> running a script, yeah, banning these C cheaters. CMD. <laughs> and if he was yeah. out of the office for a weekend, no bans. Yeah, and so I mean it's very very different. So they may be using some sort of a I mean it's probably not as crazy as what people imagine when they think oh machine learning. But you know they're, Servers they're detecting certain and behaviors. satellites and fiber networks and I mean they're probably just watching for certain input uh repetitive inputs and, and you know things like that. Three phase not... power, backup generators, solar arrays, machine learning to find cheaters in <laughs> in Apex. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I, it, who knows? I mean, it may not be super crazy advanced. My point is dealing with the hackers is one thing, but if you can't, you have to be able to detect them. You, it, it is yeah. a double, you, you have to attack on both fronts. Because even if you do a really good job, with, even if you're quick with a ban, great, quick with a whatever. But if you're skipping past 70% of the hackers, it's irrelevant. And PUBG had this yeah. problem. I don't know if it's been yep. fixed, but there was a large we'll chunk out. of time. Well, we might. Um, there's a large chunk of time where every single game, the question was, 
that was this a hacker. Every game. Yeah. There was no like one-on-one -on -one gunfights. You're like, that guy just beat me. Every game it was, how in the hell has this guy managed to kill me? Not, I, I'm not even... Not, but it, I'm not or even, there's some of you watching, like, how's this guy not been banned? Like, we're yeah. watching them just ESP people through walls and buildings. Yeah. And it's so obvious. So that's the problem. That's that. If that stuff isn't detected, I don't care what you're doing with quarantine or matchmaking or temporary bans or two two factor authentication. It doesn't matter because you're missing them. I'm still getting killed by them. So I I do like I do like this idea by EA and Respawn. Solid idea. Yeah. If it works, it should be uh it should fall throughout the rest of the industry. Yep. Spite so we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, okay, so with Fortnite, they came out with their 9.4 patch. Uh, they added the new tactical legendary and epic tactical shotguns. Oh, boy. Uh, yes, and uh, the semi-auto sniper now has reduced zoom. So, you know, that's uh, they're just trying to balance a lot of this. They did some tweaking to the combat shotgun uh, and just you know, mainly fixes for this patch. Uh, if, so if you play that, I'm sure you've noticed a difference. And then 9.41... Uh, same thing they uh they added in the storm scout sniper rifle pretty cool looking uh yeah look uh, looks different than uh, any other guns i've seen in there and also birthday presents because it's fortnite's second birthday so you can go in there and they also have birthday cake that you can go and get access to as well so two years they're celebrating two years yep <sighs> crazy you look at the amount of success they've had in, sh in, a, in, in, in such a short period of time. It is pretty, it is pretty amazing. Yep. And so, yeah, they did, uh, man, they've done a lot. And, and well, it'd be interesting to see what their presence is at PAX this year. I, I will be nowhere near where it was last year. You, you yeah. write it in the book. Do you have the book? Yeah. This is uh, last year at PAX. I think we posted some pictures on our Twitter and in our discord. There was a, some type of venue across from the Seattle to Seattle Tacoma Convention Center, I think is what it was called. And mm -hmm. um and it was all a whole glass front, but not it was not one big not big pieces of glass. They were separated by dividers. It looked like a big tic tac toe board. And they had every window pane. There must have been a hundred panes, two hundred panes. 200, yeah. 300, a, a huge, big wrapped building with window panes. Every single one of them had a Fortnite, uh, and they drew a whole scene with individual little squares that they had put up on there. They built an entire mini golf thing on the inside. We've got a picture on our Twitter of all of us, the big, big props that you either have made in Seattle and cost a whole bunch of money or, or cost a metric boatload to ship across the United States, their headquarters here in North Carolina. Just a very, just a crazy, they, they, by the way, they had a, they rented a parking lot in downtown Seattle, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to do that. They built an yep. esports arena out on the outside of it. Millions of dollars they spent on that event. Millions of dollars for nothing. A free to play game. I guarantee you they're not there. This they're not there with that same capacity. I that will eat yeah. my okay, hat. So Nick will eat his hat. Live on the air. <laughs> I'll eat my hat on the air. I just I just I, I can't I can't I I can't um I can't see it. I, I cannot I cannot fathom it. Okay, so it, Nick will eat his hat on the air if <laughs> Fortnite has a similar presence at PAX yes. this year. Yes, and I th it'll be very obvious. I will. Uh, I'll eat my hat, Brian. Oh, right there. I'll, I'll be. I'll eat my hat right here on the air. So there you go. I just don't see it. I don't. All I don't. Right. I don't. I don't know. Got it. I, now, I hope the, the, it'll be interesting this year, Brian. The Epic booth. Will be a lot different than it was last year. It'll be all yeah. about the Epic Game Store. Well, and that's where I'm hoping it'd be interesting because that's I'm what we'll be hanging to... out in the VIP area, as you know. We are, oh yeah, we'll have our actually we're actually manning the booth. We haven't told anybody. You gave us all this money to go to PAX. Epic Game is actually paying us to work. This has worked out very well. Yes. <laughs> With my AirPods, yes, in the 
the epic, uh, epic and Nick is Nick instead bought AirPods with the PAX money. Yes. <laughs> Brian's like, I'm trying to pay the Airbnb. And I was like, oh, $140. Oh, <laughs> where, where did that go? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So we'll, of course, be backstage at the Epic booth. We'll get a good, we'll get a good picture in front of the uh, Epic logo. We'll make sure we get that for the memes. So Very there. good. Um, is that it? Yeah, dude. What are you? Oh. Um, well, we, we've got more. Okay. So one thing I was going to mention. Yeah. Uh, is so what, did GTA... you, hold on. what did you want to say? I cut you off. What did you want to say? Were you trying to say something about PAX? Uh, no, okay, no, sorry. Uh, so GTA, they're adding into their GTA online, uh, casinos, which oh. I think is less for GTA online. It seems like it's really a role-playing feature as well. Cause I know the role-playing community has put in, tried to really work into like 5M, uh, stuff for casinos. So they're adding that. Now, of course, I'm sure that they'll have a way to spend your shark dollars or whatever they are. Shark points. Uh, so you'll be able to spend those and then do all kinds of things with them. Good way to just waste money, but, uh, but they will be having, yeah. So they'll have the casinos in there and that should be in an update. I think it just rolled out. Uh, so it should be live, but they'll be having the diamond casino and resort. Uh, and and they have, of course, memberships. Head Neophyte says he's logging in to buy the penthouse immediately following the podcast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Nisco says adding to the gambling addiction. You know what I love about Rockstar? This is how they know that's such a hot button issue. They don't care. Yeah, they're, they're like, going to do whatever they want. Yeah. Like, oh, you're not going to play our game? You're not going to buy GTA 6? No, you are. Who can? Yeah. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. It's pretty funny. Yep. So, this, uh, yeah. So, I just figured I'd mention that because there's so many role players that are actually playing this. Yeah. Um, Scum, which if we look in this book, uh, they're on 0.2. Point four five, point one five, four seven one. And of course, I will play scum at zero point three, point one. So they are. Uh, sounds like they're still a little ways off from that. But this was pretty much just a number of bug fixes. Uh, they did do a wipe. So if you had a character on a server, your character will be wiped out, and you'll be starting fresh. Uh, and then they added a new comic. So uh, I didn't put the link in there, but I will put it on there right now and this is comic number i think 17 that they're they just released so hmm. there you go so what do you uh, a... uh, uh, what do you think about these whole this whole comic thing i it was it was kind of kind of cute at the beginning um and i don't mean that in a I, I don't mean i don't mean that in a way to make poke fun at them but um, but what uh, What's the goal with this? I mean, I know they're trying to write a story, but like, what are they going to do with this when it's done? Are they going to publish it? Are they? What, what do you think? What do you think's going on with this? I think personally, I think they need to use it in the game as far as like cutscenes and telling a story, because that, that's what this game really is does not have. I mean, supposedly there's all this lore, but when you get into the game, it doesn't seem to make sense. Like you don't see it in the game. You you see it because they posted it outside, and you know they did a video. That says, "All right, you're in some sort of a game show. You're a convict. You don't know that from being in the game, other than you have a, a suit that, you know, is like a prison suit." Uh, and, and so I think that if they were to kind of implement this into the story of the game, telling you why you're there, how you got there, kind of like what they're now doing with PUBG. Uh, PH says he thinks that people were promised. Yeah, he says people are promised a game, not a comic. But it, hey, if they work this into it and make it towards actually telling the story, then there you go. That makes more sense. That's, if they're just doing this, they're hiring a whole person on to do this. So if they're just doing it for the sake of it, then eh. My point was that the, it was cute for a little while, but now every week, it's like, that's not how people read. Could you imagine watching a TV show in five minute increments every week? No. Yeah. But I mean, this person is making them and, you know, I mean, that's why they're spread out because but they do one every week up every week yeah. that's the point is it's just weird it's like there's people are i i would i'll leave my hat again if people are waiting with bated breath for the next scum comic it just seems like yeah it just seems like a no I, what is what is a gain what i don't i don't know what is a what's going to be accomplished with this they're just i understand they're trying to build in the lore but it would take 10 years to build out the damn story I mean, I've looked. We've I looked mean, at these well, every week. If you look nothing at, happens. The comic is at the uh, at the point where they jump out of the plane, 
So oh, congrats. yeah, great. That, oh yeah, and this is a very that, useful. That doesn't scene. happen in the game. So they jump, but they don't even land. There's still hundreds of of meters above the above the land. But so part of the issue with this is currently no text. I, I, there is no br like there is no airdrops currently. So I guess that's a feature they're adding. Because you don't currently, at least, uh, well, I haven't played it in a little while, while, little while, but there was no parachute scene. You just kind of spawned into the world. So, I mean, at least it's giving you an idea of what's to come, perhaps. Yeah. PH brings up a good point. He says, look at PUBG. They threw in the lore when the game is fairly finished. That is an interesting, it's something we've talked about a lot. You more than I, Brian, but how, do you have a hard time that you need to be done? No. Okay. So I, I was going to go to the gym after this, but oh, that's fine. That's not important. Um, so if you, I, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. Um, how important is we, we, we know that having some sort of story is important. I, I think, I think yeah. everybody can agree, but in a game like with a game like scum in its current status, a, I can't say a dwindling player base cause they never had one. It was, it's always been a relatively small player base. How important yeah. is a story? Is this bringing new players into the game? If you're Brian, the developer, and you're building a game, you, do you think this is bringing new people back to the game or keeping engaged people yeah. playing? No, I mean, they're going to have to do, they're going to do some drastic things to really pull in some streamers and things like that to get people to, I think, to seriously look at this again. They, they've got to get it to where the gunplay is on point that it has to be an entertaining game to watch. And the second that they do that, then you'll get people like Dr. Disrespect, you'll get people like Summit playing this game, and then they'll go through and, and do it. Uh, but I, I don't think anybody's going to take it seriously till then. Yeah, I, I just... Me as, the, me as somebody that bought this game, and again, I'm not pissed that I bought it. I bought it... I, it was like $20. I mean, it is what it is. Played it very little. It's You just wonder what... You wonder uh, how much time is going into this. Because you can, yeah. Brian, I think, I don't know how, what kind of company structures you've worked in. You know damn well, this is not just one person. And this is not being done totally without any input by one person. This is absolutely okay. getting discussed in a staff meeting every week. Okay, so, so but there's one person drawing it. Correct. So there's one person in charge of it. But yeah, they're all going into, because they got to come up with a story. That's my point. They got to make sure, they got to make sure that it all matches the lore, that there's something that she's not, they don't want her putting something in there that, that ends up not even being in the game. So, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into this, but we'll see if it pays off. Yeah. I just, I wonder if they did it like maybe, it's, maybe instead of doing a page a week, what if every month they released a dual, a dual pane or like a couple pages of a book or something? That's what I'm trying to yeah. say. I don't know. Just, just kind of like, push the story forward. This, a little I mean, this faster. guy can't take a vacation. I mean, he can, he has to do two in a week, but like it's just a, it just, it just seems like a very time sensitive, task that is probably eating yep. up more time than it should i'm not inside the company just my thoughts we can move on yep just my thoughts all right <laughs> hey everybody loves your thoughts well, that's, I don't all right know. who knows so let's uh let's talk about jaws of extinction which oh, okay. we still need to play i need a key i'll i'll make sure you have the key here okay. before the weekend how about that how about that um so they did do uh they do are making some changes because this is originally oh. how i kind of noticed it to the character model and oh. if you look, uh, they are improving it some, making using some better techniques to just kind of give it a better look, not being so shiny. I mean, they had way too much shine on it. And Wait, well, not too shiny. This girl's the definition of shiny. What are you talking about? Scroll down. Scroll down. Her? Yeah. But so is this a before and after? I think so. Uh, they don't really say. They don't but say. Because this girl is like, but, there is light reflecting off of a, a piece of clothing a gray piece yeah. of clothing it's like it's like she's soaking wet well, it's like, it's or like she, a wet no, it's like she's contest. plastic i mean yeah wet t-shirts don't shine bright white light back at you she, she looks like yeah. a, a piece of plastic yep and so this other one this looks a lot better though much much better yeah. yeah so uh they also have been working on the bow and arrow in the game so you can go in and uh Shoot a bow and arrow, uh, and we, we, since we we haven't really since we haven't played this, uh, this will be interesting to see what because they, they're working on they're going to be improving the AI because yeah, it does have zombies, 
uh, and just kind of be working on a lot of areas of the game. So we need to play it now so that we have that baseline yeah. to know here's kind of early on how it is so we can appreciate some of the changes that they're making. Uh, and they also, they put in there also their patch notes. So they kind of have like a developer's log and then they have a straight up patch note which says, you know, here we added this, we fixed this. So if you're interested, we'll have that in the show notes and you can go check it out. And it's, the game is nineteen ninety nine. That perfect price point. All right. And yeah, uh, Head Neophyte, he says roughness equals zero, which it, it, when you're linking up the model and you put roughness to zero, it makes it so it's super shiny. Like it, roughness is what gives it kind of like the dull look or the non shiny. So let's say you had a, um, a metal ball that is sitting there and you want it to reflect, like you mm -hmm. see a, a lot of times in yeah, the test scenes, absolutely. you see a reflective metal ball. Well, you make that to where the me metallic is, you know, maxed. And then the roughness is zero, and then it will sh it'll be glossy. Yeah. It's so like, that's like pretty much what that character. Yeah, that's what that character pretty much had was a very glossy. And so little things like that. And there's also technologies inside of the engine that make skin look better and kind of give it a little bit of a transparent look. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff that they can do if they if they really work their character. Huh. So, anyways, a little bit nerdy. Oh, really? Uh, anything else? I think that, uh, does that cover, we didn't talk about Atlas, but I mean, honestly, uh, who cares? I don't think anything really came out. I mean, they added, so they added a new quest. Oh my God. They added a shark wheel skin and they added a Kraken wheel skin. Um, yeah, there you go. Golf clap, go, golf clap for all. Yes, I'm really I, those people really piss me off. Yeah, well, I mean, they may be struggling as a company now. I mean, eh. what are they? Eh. What do they have bringing in money? Arc. Is it still bringing Absolutely. in money? How DLCs and things like that still bringing? In but money. The, but I'm just saying they they are not creating another DLC. Doesn't matter. Still bringing in money. You don't have yeah, forty thousand people playing a game and you're not making any money on it. Maybe I don't. They don't sell skins. Like they would. They wouldn't. I don't keep, know. They wouldn't be keeping it up, maintained enough if they didn't. If they. If they're. Uh... Yeah, just to be interesting to see how they make how how much they're actually making sales on all those DLCs and things. Still. Yeah. Yes. Um. Okay. Well, with that being the case, it is now time to transition. I got to get my soundboard panel back here after playing my X Files theme. It is time to talk about video games and who is playing all of them all right let's start off with arc the game that makes no money is evolved 36,373 the 24-hour peak 51,166 with a 70 peak of 65,202 let's take a look at rust 53,193 the 24-hour peak 7 75,466 with a 70 peak 87,287 not sure what's going on with PUBG right now. The player number is 120,000 concurrent players lower than it was last week, which must be a Steam issue. 37,067. It was over 100. And, it was like 170,000 last week. So something is wrong there. Uh, the 24-hour peak. Maybe for the update or something. Yeah, maybe. I have no idea. 24-hour um, peak, 624,293 with a seven-day peak. And not much higher at 669,000. 114 and finally we didn't talk about their updates there's always playing it atlas 2487 the 24 hour peak 3000 3387 and finally the seven day peak you think oh two three four five six thousand four thousand six hundred and seventeen for alice mm. it ain't. and they just released their new single player um so I, that's even with people playing locally and I do want to, um, I do want to say with, uh, with that, I don't have a graphic for it because we don't really talk about it a whole lot. But Scum, uh, which we said is, doesn't have the greatest player base, it's like 3,400 people playing it right now. The 24-hour peak hovers around 5,500, and the uh, seven-day peak is like 7,000. So it's they got, got Atlas a, beat. And they do have Atlas beat, which is not a bar to, to set. I just for for a game like this, it's a small studio. Is uh, I, now here's the thing miscreated does it now it, it's it's published by devolver 
which is a big studio, but it's being published by yeah. a small studio. Um, how long do you, and it doesn't have the greatest reviews. How long do you keep a game like this alive? Devol because Devolver is the one publishing this. So how long, you know, how long? Yeah, when do they pull the plug? Yeah, and I, I'm not saying they're near that, but your numbers at three. You're not. I mean, you can look at a if you look at a um a six month chart. I mean, it's up, but then it just goes way down. Um, yeah. Who? So who knows? Yeah, I don't. It, we'll see. I, that, that's the thing about that. It's not like it's a bad game. Um, uh, as far as graphics, like it's it's there's a lot of good good things about that game, and it's just crazy that it, it's just the wrong time. I think. <laughs> who knows? Maybe it will come back. It might come back. It's got a decent enough play base. I think I may be a little up, a little bit misrepresenting it. It's a, it's actually a little bit more than I thought. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be I want to be totally transparent. Um, it's 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 a lot less than I thought, or it's excuse me, it's a lot more than I thought. I thought the number was much lower. But I, it's got the player. I don't hear anybody talk. We this this game fits the bill for survival video game. Yeah, people aren't talking about played. it on Reddit. I don't see it being played on my friends list. I I just I don't I don't know. Well, it would be interesting to see if there was a turnaround and like they released some certain set of features or something and people started playing it again. Yeah, I get mean, rid of the whole mech you know, scenario. That would that would be a great selling point. Yeah, I mean that's part of the issue is they're going for this kind of semi futuristic. And, but it's not enough to really make you feel like it's truly futuristic. Like it's just, it doesn't sell it well. So, all right. Are we ready for tip of the week? What is tip of the week, Brian? Well, tip of the week is where we go through and either give a general gaming tip to help you with your everyday life or a, uh, for a specific game. And I don't know that I've ever done this, but this one is going to be day Z. So this is tip of the week. All right, so in Daisy, probably one of the first things you will notice is that your water is fairly low when you start. And uh, and that's something that you have to address pretty quickly. And so the first thing that you want to try to find is a water bottle. Uh, and if you can find a water bottle, the, the benefit of this is you can run to one of the wells and you can fill it up. Now, if you're in a combat situation, you probably the reason that you'd want to not just directly drink from the well is that filling the bottle and then drinking it is actually faster than drinking directly from the well. So if you're gonna go right, right up the well, it will have a longer timer. There's a better chance you're gonna get shot while you're there, but you can fill that bottle really quickly. And if you need to run away or even just drink it there, like that whole time span of doing that is faster uh, with the water bottle. Also make sure you eat the food as you come across it. Because that will also, you know, you you get hunger over time, but it'll also increase some of your water as well. Because uh, that is a very legitimate way to die in some of these games is when you don't have food or water and you starve or, or uh, die of dehydration. So that is tip of the week. Brian, I've got to call you out. You're going to call me mm -hmm. out on the show. I'm going to call you out on the show. Yes. How can you be giving a tip for a game that you don't own? Because I, I figured you would enjoy it. <laughs> what? 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 I figured you could use this tip. I don't want to use your tip. I'm not interested. Okay. <laughs> well, that was I was bringing up a comment from the chat room. By the way, we have a chat room. And if you join us here live, maybe you listen to the podcast. Maybe you're walking around the airport. Brian thinks you're a douchebag. If you're walking around the airport in, your, in, in the airport your, with, your, with your with your air they're called AirPods. AirPods. If you're walking sorry. around the airport in your AirPods, I think you're a cool guy. Brian hates you. Fact, you heard it here on the program. I'd love to have you join us live. And you can do so. We're here live every Tuesday evening, every Tuesday evening, uh, most Tuesday evenings on here, our, our Twitch channel, and we're on YouTube live. If you can't get Twitch, it's twitch.tv forward slash infection podcast on YouTube. Just search infection podcast or go to infectionpodcast.com forward slash YouTube. We're live on both platforms. We don't do the chat on YouTube. So sorry about that, but, uh, we're live on both platforms and you can chat, give us your banter and, uh, we look forward to reading it. So I had to call you out, Brian. Yep. It was highly requested in the chat. Fake news, Brian. All right. Doesn't own the game. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> hey, I watched someone play it. So <laughs> yeah, you're close next. enough, right? <laughs> Are you ready for the game giveaway? Yes, sir. All right. So let's see. Uh, 
Let's see who wins here today. Oh, we'll draw this one again. Congratulations, hey. Judd. Uh, oh, it's Judd. And he has won uh, this game today. Monster, what was it called? Monster something? I'll have to pull it up. Uh, Monster Prom. Yeah, there we go. So, Monster Prom, congratulations. Overwhelmingly positive reviews. So let us know how you like it. Uh, is there anything else we need to talk about before we roll out? Better than the Area 51 reviews, which are mostly negative yes. at, this, at this point in time. Yes. So, no, sir. All right. So uh, if you want to, first of all, you can find me at Boise Computer on Twitter. Um, and we have uh, a website, biteoftech.com. But if you want to go and find Nick and I, you can go to infectionpodcast.com, as he was saying, and make sure you join our Discord server. It's a great place to hang out and give uh, suggestions of uh, news that you would like to have covered, or maybe there's a game coming out you'd like us to talk about. Uh, we have a link for the Steam group if you want to get it. It does say H1Z1 on there, but it will give you a notification before the show starts. We have linked to our YouTube, our Twitch, all the audio forms, and all the show notes for all these past episodes that we've talked about. Nick gets them up there the night of the episode, and uh, and we have all the links to the videos and different uh, maybe change logs and all the things that we talk about. So make sure you check it out, infectionpodcast.com. Yes. Um, I don't... Ooh, I feel bad. I got... Um, somebody sent me a message. I don't remember if it was a tweet, a Discord, or a Steam message. They said, what happened to the Discord link on the website? I don't remember who. I'm sorry. The Discord link is on there. I verified it with a, one of my alt accounts. Ooh, spooky. I have a second Discord account just to make sure that link still is active. It is. Uh, so if you're okay. having a problem, nothing was changed. I checked. Try another browser or a different device or something. Maybe I don't. I don't know what. I don't think you were banned from our Discord. That would be my only other thought. We don't. We haven't really banned anybody. So I don't think we have. I don't think we have anybody banned besides people that come in and spam. Like people, we have like a couple porn bots that spammed a bunch of NSFW links. Other than that, we have never banned anybody. So if you're still having a problem, I'm sorry. I don't remember. I don't remember where it came in or what when it was. Let me know. So um, yes, as PH says, Dark Web Nick sixty nine is my alt. So if you see me yes. perusing around Discord, give me a little uh, say uh, infection, and we'll know that our secret communication channels are working. So there you go. Very good. <laughs> yes. Uh, All right. Thank you, Brian. And mm -hmm. it's I'm excited. We, you and I, back together again in yes. like four weeks. This is exciting. I'm really looking forward to yeah. it. We have a really, yeah, really good time. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to that. We have a little. We have a little bit bigger Airbnb, so we'll have some more room <laughs> to actually. We're gonna have some. Uh, we're gonna have some really cool um, Twitch streams from there, which will be super neat. So stay tuned for that. Yep. We'll, we're not going to try to plan anything. We'll just let you know on Twitter at infection cast when all that stuff goes down. So Brian, thank you. Um, yep. Go. Thanks for doing all the notes and all that stuff. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. All right. No RV trip, Sean. Sorry. All right, folks. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. Follow me on Gab. Gab.com forward slash Nick. You can check that out. Our website is infectionpodcast.com. You missed any portion of the show, whatever it may be, you can check that out. Links, videos, the whole shebang over there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.